Are content creators artists, in your opinion? I, I think so. I think so. I think so, because the thing with art, artistry in the, in the word, like, by definition, art, it's so, like, it could be anything. Like, and you see it, whereas, like, we talked about it earlier, too. Like, we at these art galleries, these, you see, like, a banana on a wall. Or, and like, the, the guy who ate the banana and, and the guy who, that an art Yeah, piece. he's, like, contemporary art or, like, these, these wild pieces of art. Like, oh, you know, a piece of paper that's a piece of, that's just art. What, how's it art? Oh, because it's nothing. So nothing is art. Oh, okay. So it's like, if that's the rawest form of art, or like, not, not the rawest, let's say the most traditional form of art, then this is art. What you do is art. We're all artists. You know, if you are doing something and people have an opinion on it, whether it's a product, a service, or content, then you're an artist. You know, it's art because people are going to interpret it differently. It's going to provoke some thought. People might hate you. But them hating you is you're getting a reaction. You're an artist. What, what art does. So the follow up, quick follow up to that. Do you think that because of the way content creation is going and just the nature of content creation, do you think that content creation, just to get a little bit more specific, do you think that it's a folk art? And mm. by, because like there's there's a distinction between art and folk art, and I'm not this is not my opinion. It's just kind of more of like a definitions thing, which that you can get really in muddy in the, in the waters when you start going into that stuff. But a folk art, meaning like almost anybody can kind of pick up and do it. And that's not disparaging folk arts versus like the arts and that whole thing. But do you think that maybe content creators fall under more of like the folk art category, not folk in terms of music, like folk yeah, art yeah, in terms yeah. of like, it's more like almost like, you don't really necessarily need the formal training or things like that. I mean, every, everybody and anybody can pick up and contribute and do it. I think so. A hundred percent, a hundred percent because there's, um, these content creators, these artists going back to like these streamers and stuff that I see where it's like, there's no, you see no talent. You see no like quality of like, what the fuck is this? Or like but somebody puts out a tweet where they're like, I took a shit today. Like, should we consider that art? You know what I mean? Like, I'm, but I'm serious. Like, if we're, if we're going into that like, yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of like weird realm, like, is that considered art? And like, is somebody tweeting like, fuck this guy, is that art? Is somebody in, making a comment in the comment section art? Yeah. Like, it, and that, that that's why I really wanted to get into that question because I want to know what, as somebody who's like, you're talking about artists, but then you're also creating content which can be considered art, just like how you view that whole spectrum i still think so yeah i still think so it's just not an, it's, it's more of a, like a folk art then it wouldn't be just like necessarily like a you know like i'm a painter i'm a sculptor i do this yeah thing. it's a new age version of art but it's still an art you know um there's people even if you do want to do like a tweet there's people that have had certain tweets like when um jay-z tweeted I think um, certain tweets have become nfts and or framed or yeah yeah like, yeah. like, like jay-z tweeted thing. one time jay-z gave like shout out to like a bunch of rappers on twitter and like he i think mac miller was in there in that name of tweets uh, that he had and mac miller literally printed out that tweet hung it up on his wall it was like a thing like he like he framed in his room or whatever his studio and he's like oh this is when jay-z shouted me out so tweets can be seen as definitely art so like yeah anything i think anything it can be art man is um it might suck to hear that to, for certain artists and stuff. Like, oh, anything is art. But I think it's reality. It's reality. Right now, at least. What made you transition from... And you still do reaction videos. But what made you transition from, hey, I'm doing reaction videos to, like, I I should do a podcast? I think what it was really was just me listening to podcasts. Like, I loved listening to podcasts. Um, the Joe Budden podcast specifically is like my favorite podcast. Like I'm always constantly listening to Joe Budden podcast. Um, but I'll listen to like a bunch of other, like, you know, Andrew Schultz, Flagrant 2, like any popular podcast, especially on YouTube, stereotypically nine times out of 10, I'm, I've tapped in with them or at least watched a couple episodes of them. Um, but the Joe Budden podcast, I would constantly listen to them, to him. And I kind of followed his motto in the sense of like, he would drop every week. He would number them. Um, it would be music related. Um, and then some friend banter. So that's what I, I followed. I'm like, oh, I just want to do my own. And locally, I didn't feel like there was any like major podcast with like visual content constantly dropping. Um, that spoke to me, like my generation, like, you know, of my age. I didn't see that really, right? I got a question about the visual stuff yeah, yeah. later on, but keep going. I don't want to interrupt. Yeah, I didn't see that really. So I'm like, hmm, why is that not happening? I'm like, oh. And it's like, I get it. Whereas like nine times out of 10, like I said earlier, it goes to business, right? Business fucks with the art. 
So people, I can't afford to do this. I'm bringing money. I don't have much of a following, especially out here in Rhode Island. And I get that. But for me, it was like, if I build up a high quality content piece and, you know, I already go viral with the reactions and shit that I do, reposting, repurposing people's content, you know, news. Let me just do my own version. You know, instead of tweeting an opinion, posting an opinion on my IG story, let me put it in a podcast form. You know, even locally, talk about some local stuff. See how it goes, right? And it, it's it's taken off. Like, people love it. Even if the actual episode itself might not get, you know, a high volume of watchers, etc. to the point where I would want it to be. Like, I would love to be like a podcast where it's like 100,000 views every episode that drops at least. That's like one of my goals. Like, I would love in the future to get to that point because like... That would like a thousand views. I would be happy with that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like for me, it's like... Is e is easy to get like the thousand views because I had the following already from the reactions and stuff. So people like at least a click on it. Cause for YouTube, all you need is four seconds to count as a view. So it's easy to get what well, view, right? But to consistently um keep it growing, you know, I know that I can at least rely on the fact that even if those numbers might stay steady, whatever, my clips, repurposed moments from the podcast on TikTok, short form content of it. It goes crazy. People love it because they don't see it either. They don't see like they might know a local podcaster, but they don't see a local podcaster maybe talking about local news or like right. showing the local news and then maybe showing their it's opinion. It's like hyper relevancy. It's like hyper targeting almost. Exactly. Like, without like the analytic side of targeting. It's just targeting in the in the form of the content and of itself is targeted. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and I would I would you know, I would see it on Twitter where like certain local tweets from uh, Twitter accounts would get a good amount of following uh, to this day. And it will blow up like local Twitter accounts. And I'm like, damn, these guys are just, you know, saying some stuff. Why can't I just do that on a podcast forum? I already have the company, the brand. Let's do that on a podcast forum. And then, you know, it's taken off. So, and and then I love it. It really brings me joy. Like I, I, I got it. I started listening to podcasts more consistently when I f- went through my first breakup during like uh, ending high school, starting uh, URI freshman year. I would listen to Joe Budden podcasts consistently. It would help me. Like, it would help me, like, through my, like, depression, depressing thoughts and, like, just go day by day listening to people. Listening to people conversate, you know, about things I like. Music. Joe Budden. Oh, okay. Boom, boom, boom. Constantly. So, doing that, you know, I knew that it was like, a, it was like this. Help, if this helped me damn near, like, on, on a therapeutic sense, you know, then I know that that, that content has value. So, me doing it, you know, it, it was going to be always something that I, that I would enjoy. That is like, I love talking. Like, I like talking to you now. I could do a six-hour interview if it was up to me. Like, I don't care. Like, I'm... Oh, that's why my, my <laughs> things are long format. I'll put breaks in between, but I'm just like, I want to get as much as like... I'd rather have the tape keep going and then edit later than like stop it and then not get a gem. Yeah, man. Because I, I don't know. I just love... I feel like people need to talk to each other more. Like, us as humans. Even though it's like, I'm a bit hypocritical in that because some days I wake up like, oh, I hate people. Like, I, I don't want to... I don't want to take a pick up this phone call today. Like, I just want to, you know, but I think it's because I just sometimes need a, like a, a break from like talking so much. Like I'm always right. talking. So it's like, ah, oh, I got to talk again. Like I'd rather text. I'd rather, you know, I'd rather email. I love email. It's like a fatigue almost. Yeah, it's almost like a fatigue. Like I talk so damn much all the time. It's like, I got to talk again, you know, but, um, you know, it, it, yeah, that's that's how I feel with the with podcasting. Like I, I, I know I needed it to be done. And I've done it. And again, I didn't want to make it the Providence podcast. I didn't want to make it so regionally. Where so you it's like, didn't want to make it the creative capital show. You're like, <laughs> let, let Jason handle that crap. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do this. You know, I, I personally, I didn't want to do that because like, I already had the brand. So I'm like, mm. and at the same time, which I think you were going to ask eventually, you know, I did have to rebrand the name legally. So I'm like, oh. Like, yeah. How did you go from like thing ambition to like club ambition? With Like what was the, because they, they seem very similar. I'm just, and like. Also, good idea because you had the CA. You didn't have to change the logo, I guess. Which yeah, so it, good. So it kind of came down to like the idea of like keeping a CA because some people were kind of already abbreviate stuff. Like yep. this new generation loves abbreviations; they'll abbreviate yep. everything. So CA, CA guys, CA, CA. You know, um, so the logo as well with the CA and the triangle, everything about it geometrically. So to keep it the same, but then we had to legally we tried to trademark it the complex ambition, but we ran into a legal a problem where it's like. For us to, um, like, we, we weren't told that we couldn't fully do it, but for us to go fully about it, we would have to maybe have to go to court and maybe prove, like, that we were, like, that we can do this. Like, 
I forgot the so actual complex, but not club. That's that's interesting. Yeah, so I chose club personally because I ran through every C word. I'm not gonna lie, I ran through everything. There's a couple I thought about creative. That would be hilarious, but I, I thought about creative that. ambition, but I'm like, uh, that's that's yeah, it's okay. It's it's okay. It doesn't have the same ring. Yeah, I think that was like the runner up. Um, club just rung a bell for me because it was short. Um, join the club is like, oh, join the club. Also, some... nightclubs with music, like that's another kind yeah of like weird segue that you could go into too, and like cl- I just club just sounded really good to me. I, it, it just worked to me, like club ambition. Um, I've had thoughts about maybe repurposing, doing like a new redesign of the logo. Um, not the triangle, but more of like the club ambition. But I do like the one that it is right now. But yeah, it, it, it had to be done because I really couldn't afford. Even now, I still couldn't afford to like try to go to court against other companies' lawyers to like prove like oh. At the same time, with it comes to complex ambition, the name a lot of people will call us complex. Oh, complex. Or like they'll think complex media, yeah. and they think that we're working with them. Yeah, exactly. And if complex media is like, oh hey, hey, hundred percent, hundred percent. My friends, they would be you know strung on to the idea of like, oh, complex ambition. So this day, like Marlon loves because that, that's why trademark lawsuits happen. Is that if you create brand confusion in the market, and because complex is a media company, they can actually go after you and be like, you're creating confusion in the market. We 100%. can prove it. Hundred percent. So you got to shut down. Hundred percent. Because people, you know, me, I love deep diving into businesses and like how they started and what's going on. So I understand the business side of things, right? Especially because I'm a business major and like I just love, you know, and I'm also forced into this uh, this thing. I have to like know about the business shit and everything that's going on. But, you know, like my friends and shit, like they're not going to be deep diving into that. So they'll be more Somebody's strong into it. it at some point. Yeah, but someone has to, right? So, but they'll be more strong into like, you know, we grew up in school, like complex ambition. So like, that's what it should still be. But it's like, it can't but, be. Like, do you like, want to pay, want, the, do you yeah. pay the legal fees for us going up against complex media that yeah. has way bigger pockets than we do? Like, like realistically, if we want to take this to like a brand international level, it has to be something that we can fully own the intellectual property, the full brand name. And not have problems down And through. not have any problems, you know? And we could have probably gone to court and maybe won with a complex media, et cetera, if we wanted to. But... Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Like our lawyer at the time, Alex was like, oh, this is like, guys, this would be like... At minimum, a hundred thousand dollars, and you probably you might lose it. You could maybe Cause, win because you're gonna have to because because of the brand confusion, yeah, litigation and all this and shit. All I'm shit. like, what the hell? Hundred thousand? I'm like, no, 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 no. We are not. That's not happening. We're not dealing with that. Hell no. Let's change the name. And then it was just finding the name, you know, getting the proper thing. And then you know, I think it worked still because like we'll still get some comments, like random fans be like, ah. I missed the old name or like, oh, you guys fell off. But I don't really, I, I could see it. Whereas like, yeah, if I did the videos with Eric still and we had the old name, our views might be a bit higher. But I think the music industry is like taking a dive. If you look at the landscape of reaction channels, the views are down. Like the views will only be up when it's a big artist, Drake, Travis Scott. But when it's not them, the views are down, you know? So, and I see that with a lot of reaction channels where it's like, they won't upload sometimes for months. Because like, oh, and our big artist hasn't dropped in months. They won't upload for months. Not me. I have, if it's not a commission reaction, I'll have something to do reaction-wise. And on top of that, I have the podcast. So I'll be able, I'll be able to pump some content towards that. But yeah, man, it's a, uh, you know, and again, the name in general, whether it was Compass Ambition or Club Ambition, is still a brand name. So I'll be able to have an umbrella and just push it out. If it was reaction channel, blah, 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 JK, whatever, reacts, you know, blah, 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 these brothers reacts. And it, again, it gives you the opportunity to do different stuff. Exactly. You can do the podcast along with the reactions, along with Man on the Street, along with, like, you could do other stuff later on. Hell yeah. you have that brand. Hell yeah. I've done Spanish reactions with my dad in the past, like, two months. There's, like, about, like, two or three of them. And they've gotten great views. I'm like, I got to do these more. Like, Side this is crazy. question, just because you just popped in, I, I really want to ask it. Um... Probably should ask it later, but I think it's too good to ask it now. I noticed that, like, you have like a like a just a, the podcast, but the Spanish version. Yeah, yeah. And it's not, and it's not just like, oh, here's some subtitles for Spanish audio. Like, like it's a different, yeah, not maybe a hundred percent different, but it's different because of that. And I, I remember seeing that, and just going like, that's kind of brilliant. And why aren't more people doing that? Because they're like, hey, everybody, there's other languages besides english yeah and there's other cultures besides like you know white people yeah. like yeah yeah and yet i don't see more people like repurposing or redoing their own stuff to like mm-hmm. the context of 
an audience that is either their audience or maybe like runs parallel to their audience. Like, I wonder why that is. Like, yeah. I, I was like, that's, I'm like, that, like, why is, I'm kind of like, why are more people not doing that? Yeah, no, 100%. I felt the same way. I, I, I locally in Rhode Island, I, I'll feel a lot of times where it's like, why is not, why is, if people aren't doing it, I'm like, I can at least try to do it or like, let's see what happens. Or let me, yeah, or let me, let me see if I can tap into someone that might not be doing this, like, help them do it. Like, it needs to be done, right? So locally, I didn't feel like there was any, like, Spanish podcasts that had engaging content, viral clips, you know, moments like that. So I, it needed to, it needed to happen, but it wasn't really the driving force behind it. It was just my father. Like my father, he loves talking about politics. Like he grew up talking about politics in DR, working with politicians in DR, local politicians in Providence. He's, he's known them, a lot of them. Cause like he'll be a part of campaigns or like he'll just be in the mix. Like he loves talking to people. Like that guy is like, he's almost annoying to the point. Like he'll talk to anyone for so much like time. Um, but he always wanted like a show. He's like, oh, he's like, you know, you gotta do a show. I gotta do a show for me. We gotta do a show. And I'm like, yeah, you're damn near better, to, better on camera talking than me, but I gotta do a brand. It needs to be a Spanish podcast name. It needs to be a logo. We got to do this right. Exactly. We got to do a schedule of the days we're going to record. Maybe have a co-host. Maybe have some guests. You know, and we've done it. And it's worked. You know, whether it's not getting much views on a long form, the short clips, uh, uh, we've had viral moments in the Spanish podcast, which is crazy to me, like, to say it, like, where it's like, without even planning it, like, my dad will post on his TikTok account with no followers a clip that I created from him, for him, from the podcast, the Spanish podcast, talking about something in Rhode Island or talking about, you know, anything news related. And a lot of times they would go viral, like get hundreds of thousands of views. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Like, but it just goes to show you that that organic side of it, you know, people love it. Like people love him. You know, maybe it's a thing as well, where it's like, he is my father. So I do get it from somewhere, right? Like the actual broadcasting energy, talking on camera. So I, I think it's definitely from him. I know I get the entrepreneur side from him, like the business minded from him. Because aside from being, like, he always was a janitor for a long time, like, uh, high schools, he always did something on the side. Like, he'll sell cars. He always would resell something on the side, mainly cars. Um, so I got that mindset from him. But then I knew he talked a lot. He loved talking. And he everywhere we would go, he'd know everyone in the city. He was always talking, talking, talking. So putting that on camera has been dope. And it also is cool to connect with him where it's like, I'll have something to do with my dad. I get to see him once a week no matter what. Like, I'll see him more than once a week. But if I don't, I know I'm going to see him at least once a week. So it's been pretty cool. I, I I love that I'm doing that. Yeah. Speaking of money, mm-hmm. um, spe- now getting into the business side of things. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're self financed. You didn't have any financial backing. You know, what was the initial amount of money that you actually? Let me rephrase that. Yeah, yeah. What determined that you're like, I need to start putting money into this? Like, what what was like a moment or moments that you're like, oh, I need to put money into this? How much money? Where'd you get the money from? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then what were like the first things that you put the money towards? Was it equipment? Was it making like an LLC? Was it trademarking? Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, if you can go through that. Because I think that's interesting, like how people like yeah. get their financing, but then what they put the financing towards and what makes them determine, yeah, I need to put money into this rather than like, oh, I don't need to put money into it yet. Yeah. So for for starting, we when we started a YouTube channel, we, for a long time, I want to say probably like, damn near four yeah about four years we never really touched the money like it'll have a google adsense account right and money would come in from the youtube reactions especially the 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 high viewed ones they'll get like a good amount of like monetizing like on per video a couple hundred dollars per video it'll add up add up to the point that we would get sometimes you know from a youtube like a adsense check of like Anywhere from like two thousand to three thousand dollars, like a month from just ad revenue, right? And then when we started touching the money was when we did merch. We did merch. We put like a, a good amount of money into merch, which we overshot. We bought way too much items. We overestimated the amount of people we thought we were gonna buy the actual product. Um, but that was the first time we t- like touched the money. Um, was the was the merch part? Was the merch because we used the GoPro and when everything was touch, low quality like, like, for a when while. When you say touch the money, was it more like meaning you took money out of the account rather than just reinvesting it in the same thing? I just want to. 
B- b- both okay. because okay I just, because yeah touch the money, i'm like so there's money there but you weren't using it like that was yeah like it was literally like money was just there sitting in the adsense account because every youtuber has like an adsense account yeah. so money would add up and we never touched it because we never like needed it we always would just like even me looking back at it i was such a dumbass where it's like why wouldn't i want to fucking use some of this money to buy a better laptop buy a uh, yeah, better. So I was gonna ask like the money to get the initial equipment. Like, how did you determine what to buy? And, the, and that I'm guessing that came from your own pocket. Yeah, we just we just had it. Like I said, the GoPro we borrowed it from my friend. Yeah, so yeah. it was a free GoPro, it was a free yeah. camera, a car. Like if we didn't have Marlon's car, literally we we would record. And sometimes cars that my dad's selling or my dad's fixing, some cars that might not even be able to run, we're just filming them, right? Or we'll borrow like my mom's car, Eric's mom's car. And the software was the free software. And the laptop was like just my bullshit Dell laptop that I had for school. Like it was, it was horrible. So it was like the lowest of quality everything for like a good amount of years. Like people would be surprised. Like for a good amount of years, everything was low quality. Even my iPhone was like an older iPhone. Like it was, everything was low quality well, for a while. I told you how I did my, I'm not going to say it out loud, but yeah. I told you how I did my, and you were like, what? <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. No, it was for a while. And I really think about it. Um, You know, the money started like leaving and being reinvested more. When we did merch, that was like a first sign of it. That was like probably 2020, like three years ago. What were the things you were reinvesting in, by the way? Just real quick. So reinvesting started, because I guess you can count the merch as reinvestment. But to be honest, we lost money with the merch because we did high quality merch, right? And we did huge bulk order. Too much. We still have stuff I think, in the basement. Like I have a bunch of stuff, um, merch, um with the old name, old logo, everything that legally we can't even really sell like so it's that. Like, okay, what do I do with this? It's like whatever. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, but the reinvesting happened here with what you guys see here with the equipment, um, building a studio, like paying the rent here. Like that was the first time, like that when adult adulting hit me hard where I'm like, Oh my God, I have to pay like a thousand plus dollars. Like, Every month, I have to write a check. I'm like, not to interrupt your train of thought. Yeah. But what, what? Um, because you're talking about the reinvesting. You're like, hey, you bought the student. Did. What were key factors? Because I think scaling is something that yeah. like is different for everybody. So like, w- was there a moment or moments where you were like, okay, I have this money to reinvest back in the business, but I need to reinvest by getting the studio. Like, like, what was the moment or moments where like, yeah, I need to move this into a studio and pay rent on a studio because that's like a big step like from a scaling perspective. So like what made you determine like, yeah, now it's the time to do it rather than like maybe, oh, further down the road. So when we started, I would say when we started the podcast because what happened with the money was like I said, the YouTube money. So to put it in better perspective, for those who don't understand, me and Eric were like the head of everything. It was like a half business damn near. Like even when we did the first LLC, it was like a 50% like partnership LLC because we did have Marloon but Marloon wasn't like not again, not to interrupt. Yeah. I'm just assuming people don't know. So like, um, maybe before getting into that, yeah. What is an LLC? Just for for yeah, people yeah, that don't yeah, know yeah. anything, yeah, yeah. What is the LLC and like? How did you go about getting that? Why was that important? Rather than sole proprietorship or something like that, because it's yeah. usually a little bit e- easier. Yeah, hundred percent. So when we started seeing like big numbers come in, like and adding up, like thousands of dollars, just adding up to this Google AdSense. You're like, we need to scale, and it's like. Yeah, at first, um, sometimes it'll go. I think at first we from from some time when we're like, oh, we got to put it in some account to get the money. We would use like my bank account, right, that I had at the time. But then, I I'm like, no, this can't. We can't do this. We need to have a business account. Like this is actually a business. Like so this is when we're L- starting realizing like this is a business. So the LLC can't, can't stuff came first before, but like getting into the studio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 The LLC came th- first. I think that's important too. Is like let's get the business stuff right with yeah. this extra money, and then scale up into the studio. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. that's the order that it happened. Okay. So it was the LLC first, um, and then because I think I'm trying to think more. The reason we really got the LLC was because of the money to put like a bank account. We want to get like a business, a business account, bank account, and we also wanted to um do the merch, but we didn't want to like oh let's not do the trademark yet. We may not have money for the trademark. We don't we don't know much about the trademark. We want to get a trademark lawyer, etc. But what we did was, like, let's get an LLC at least. Because, uh, you know, we're young kids. We always hear, LLC is important. LLC is important. So we visited the, how was that? House of Secretary, I think it's called. Whatever it's called. The, uh, the, I don't know forgot the actual term. But that the, 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 the building here in Rhode Island where you go and get your LLC. I think it's the House of Secretary or something like that. 
And we met with them. Like, we would talk to them, ask them questions. Like, well, listen, we have this. We, we're YouTubers. We want to do this. Me, my next question is, how did you go about even figuring out how to get the yeah. LLC and what to do? We would meet with them. We would meet some with, um, we met with, like, some small business um, advisor, which was an awful guy. Like, the guy was an asshole. Looking back at it, like, that guy was. Was like, this from the state? This is not a small business advisor in a bank. This was, like, a state-provided one, or? That one that was, that was, like, an awful guy, it wasn't, I don't think it was a state one. It was, like, a, one of those, like, associations. Like, these, like, we help small oh, businesses. So, so it was a private business. It like was a, a private business that specialized in helping others make a private business. Exactly. Okay, and that exactly. guy was not good. Yeah, he was not okay. good. He was not good giving a good advice. He didn't know what we, he didn't understand what we did. Like, what is YouTubers? Like, are yeah. you guys a human services? Are you not? What, what is this? What are you guys doing? Yeah. And we're like, um, what do you mean? We're a media company. Like, like, yeah, yeah. Help us out here. Exactly. Like, we didn't understand how to break it down to him, and he was kind of making us more frustrated. So, you know, and at the same time, when you have a partnership with me and Eric, we butt heads a lot. So it's like, he'll have a take, he'll have an opinion. You know, he wants to not touch the money at all. But and you I'm both like, own the LLC. Exactly. So exactly. So, the LLC. Exactly. So we would have run into like a lot of like, oh, headache moments. But, you know, when it came to like, okay, we're going to do this. We got to get the business account. We got the business account. It was me and him, 50%, everything. And then it was like, okay, now I want to do a podcast. We got to get a podcast studio. So we calculated literally like, listen, if we were to generate $0 from the YouTube channel, let's say from this day forward, we at least can afford to pay from the YouTube money that's already collected like a year and a half of months rent before we go like flat out broke. Yep. You know, or at least no money from that, like from that, from specifically from that revenue of stream. So we calculated that like, okay, right. So let's do it. Right. And we did it. And then now to this day, you know, it's been gone, it's been, it's been going good, but it's still where it's like, I'm still uh, teetering on the fence of like breaking even every month. Whereas like, you know, he left the channel, he's doing his acting. Um, Views in general have gone down. The money that comes in comes has gone down. And now, because prior to just the YouTubing, um, like I said before, like I would do sneaker reviews and stuff, but it's because I I still do I still sell sneakers. But it, back then, that's how I made my money. I would sell sneakers, I and I was a full time student. Judging my Air Maxes, I have on right <laughs> no, now. those are classic. Those are classic <laughs> pair. I love those pair. That's like an Air Max Day. Like people always po- the post that one. Edition. Yeah, people always post that one. But um, when it came to um, like how I made money was from reselling, you know, being entrepreneur minded. I personally never had a job for like I never worked at like a restaurant, nothing like I've always been grateful, uh, graceful enough to hustle, make some money myself or work with my dad. Like he'll be selling a car. I'll post it with him. You know, I'll translate because he knows English, but sometimes he wants to, you know, defend himself better. So I'll be the salesman you know, selling cars for him, talking to the the salespeople, you know, people we meet on Facebook, et cetera, wherever they came from. Um, And that's how I would make money, you know. And from school, I was able to some semesters get um, refund, some refund money. So I'll be like, oh, I can use this to um, buy a better laptop. You know, I'll I'll get money from that. We, We consciously, without like necessarily planning it, but we would tell each other, like, we don't want to touch the YouTube money. Like, we would leave that money. So, he wouldn't get, make money from his job. He'll work restaurants. Um, what else did Eric work? Eric worked resta- a lot of restaurants, different restaurants. Um, he re- he'll resell, just like me. But his main money would be from having actual jobs. I never had an actual real deal job. I was known as, like, one of, if not the biggest, like, Rhode Island, like, reseller for, like, a good amount of, like, two years. Like, like I was reselling like crazy. Like, I would be at every sneaker lineup, uh, people would see me all the time. Like I had like so many Facebook marketplace posts. Like I would provide to like about two or three um uh, sneaker stores locally, like reselling stores. Like I'll provide inventory to them, sell to them, buy from them, etc. I'll be at all the sneaker conventions. I was like, that was like my bread and butter, like crazy. Um, but then it was something that, you know, I was a full-time student. So I wasn't generating that much money. Whereas like I got to report it to taxes. It wasn't nothing crazy to that point. But eventually now with Eric leaving, you know, I'm taking this on fully. It's no longer a partnership. It's a sole proprietorship. It's just me, you know. Then I'm like, oh, okay. This is how I'm going to make the money. So now I have to touch the money to pay the rent here. If I have to touch it to 
you know, buy a you new. You have to get more deep with your accounting and figure out like how to project and how, when money's exactly. coming in and how to like use credit to your advantage, probably to like put things off. And what is credit? How do I build it? What kind of lines of credit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Th- things that I'm, I'm assuming, it's an assumption, but I think it's a safe assumption that people when they start out, like, I'm going to make this content channel, they don't think about those kind of things. They don't think about until it until they bro. have to adult hard until money actually comes. They don't in. think about that shit. And then me having a son, you know, having to move out from my family's house, you know, with my girlfriend. Made it where it's like, oh, I have, oh, to, I have to pay rent there as well. You know, oh, I have a studio, I have to pay rent here as well. Where it was so, f- like, f- like looking back at it, I was so fucking, um, I <laughs> I was so lucky to, like, be in school. You know, thankfully, I had a, uh, a, a scholarship with College Crusade. They helped me with the tuition. Um, but, like, man, generating all that money from YouTube and not touching it, being able to be live rent-free with my parents. Oh, my God. Like, you know. Not if I can go back in time. I wouldn't say that because I love my family. I, I, I love being a family man now with my son. But, you know, looking back in time is like, yo, I definitely, like, that was like a, such a privileged, like, point in my life where I was like, oh my God, I, I didn't have to pay these bills. Like, this is crazy. Because now it's like, I have, sh- like, most of my stress will be like financial things. Like, nowadays it's like, oh, I got to pay the rent here. I got to, okay, I got to make sure, like, oh. Let me do this. But then at the same time, is I put it on myself where it's like, I need to be more organized. I do everything myself. I don't have a full-on team. It's just me. So if I were to have a full-on team where it's like someone replying to email, someone reaching out to local companies you to get... You could focus more on the business side of things. Exactly. And uh, and like that actually would, goes right into my next question because you know, you, d- you did work with Eric, but then I re- but then I also heard you know from other interviews that you do everything yourself. Yeah. You know, you're just about talking about some of the drawbacks, but what are some of the advantages of doing everything yourself? Like to a, to an extent, like at some point you probably will have to scale. Yeah, right? yeah. Where whenever that moment will be, but what do you think are some of the advantages? Like I could put some information, like like me doing this with you right now. I'm pretty mobile where I'm doing it myself. Where it's like when you have to talk to other people and yeah, get yeah. stuff done, then you have to rely on them. So what are some of the you know you just talk about the drawbacks of having to do everything yourself? But what are some of the advantages of doing everything yourself? I think the advantage of doing everything myself is like the creative freedom where it's like, if I want to start up a new idea tomorrow, I can just do it. I don't have to like funnel, funnel it through anyone else or ask anyone else like, oh, is it okay if I do this or should we do this? It's like, no, I'm going to do this. You know, I'll be able to handle the fallback. And I think it's like, for me, it's the best way right now because I'm in a space right now where I feel like I can damn near try to do anything and I'm not scared of like it failing like i am not scared of it failing i'm not scared of messing up like if i say some shit do some shit that offends people i'm willing the next day to take 100 percent responsibility own up to it apologize and then move on but a lot of people are not like that a lot of people are stubborn like i've noticed that more and more now when i'm like like learning no apologizing you're not supposed to apologize ever and that's yeah i I don't like that mindset like why like respect you know if people think that way god bless them but i don't like that mindset like that's not a mindset to have i see a lot of politicians especially even locally like have that mindset and i'm like yo what the fuck like i'm not apologizing for anything that that shows weakness and i'm not changing anything i don't like that i don't like that because sometimes like if you do that momentarily like for like content like okay like fuck fuck everyone okay like a like a quick moment, like a month like that. All right, that might work. I might get some views or something. Who knows? But to constantly be like that, like always, it, people that are like that all the time, that shit is awful. Like I don't. That's horrible. Like there's no sense of like wh- wh- how are you gonna grow from that? Like you gotta you gotta take in everything. But you know people don't think that way. But I I think that way. So I think I have an advantage. Where it's like oh, I'm pretty you know neutral and everywhere well balanced. And at the same time, I'm the one that's the head of my ship. You know. Thank God, because if it was someone that was kind of very, very more uh, like stubborn and thinking one way only and like, I don't know where this could go. Like this, they butt heads and if they own part of the business or if they own 50 percent, then it's like you're kind of at that. Exactly. I'll be fucked, you know, so, you know, but I think, you know, my friend Eric and then people around me, they, they, they'll trust in like, like, I feel like they see like I'm, I might be crazy because I'm passionate and I'm like, I'm the type of guy that'll stay up all night doing some shit, but they understand like man it's just worked like we'll go out to eat and like people are buying me drinks like and it's like i don't even drink i'm like oh I'll, I'll, I'll take it man i appreciate you people show me love they call me like you said earlier people will say certain things like the creative king the uh, providence creative content king the mayor of providence and i'm like i don't take that shit for granted it's like for a reason 
You yeah, know, I mean, I came up to you and I recognized you. I was surprised you actually knew about what I was doing. And 100%. I was like, do you want to be on the show? And you were like, yeah. I'm like, oh, wow, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Come on, that's all day. I'll do this. I, I'm, I'll come back. I'll do this whenever you want. But no, yeah, I, I love the, um, I just love, I just love, um, I don't know. I just love being me. Like the way I am, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, you know, I don't know. Speaking of money. Yeah, yeah. Um, two things. One and it, it, this is if you're willing to do this, because I know not everybody's willing to do this. Can you break down how you're making revenue and like how much money comes from what, like the different revenue streams? And I also noticed that mm-hmm. you started selling like ads, basically ad platforms, but you do yeah. it a certain way. So where does the money come from? And what made you determine to add a new revenue stream in the form of ad platforms? Because I know with like a lot of artists and creators, even just putting a price on their work is like weird and like asking money for their art sometimes a weird thing and they don't know how to price it. Yeah. So where where does the money come from? What are the different revenue streams and what what was the determining factors in like, hey, I'm going to sell ad packages and I'm going to price them like this? Yeah. So money comes from YouTube by default. I'm lucky enough to have like a back catalog of videos that you know, on a on a bad month on YouTube, it'll still come in like a, a AdSense check at minimum of like $600, $700, right? But then obviously, you know, especially during like top of this year and like bottom of last year, whenever that were to happen too consistently, it, it, it'll be like, fuck, like I have to pay, you know, $1,000 here of rent, $1,000 here of rent. Like, what the fuck is going on? That's like a bad number. Um, but on average, now it'll be more on the upside, whereas like I have the YouTube channel that'll do like anywhere between like a thousand to two thousand dollars a month from AdSense, right? But then all that always funnels back and goes back into the rent, right? So I'm always damn near breaking even with YouTube and the studio rent, right? And I have no problem with that. I love that. But I'm in a place where I want to scale more and make more revenue. Not even to flex, because I'm not even the type, like, I've been the reseller, like, I've seen it all. I don't really even care about, like, buying myself a brand new pair of, like, hot shoes anymore. I don't give a fuck about that shit anymore. Like, I know that I can do it. Like, I know how to get them at retail. I know how to, you know, I've seen it all. You get to I've a point where you're just like, this isn't, this not even, like, a doesn't matter to me for no more. me. It doesn't matter to me no more. Like, I've, I've had, like, the expensive fucking, I remember one time I bought a Chrome Hearts hat that was, like, Seven hundred dollars, like a seven hundred seven dollar seven hundred dollar hat that I bought in L.A. at Chrome Hearts, like a dumbass, and it's like, oh, it's an investment. So I thought about, it. I'm like, oh, I can wear it a couple times, like to be cool, right? And then flip it or something. And then thing. that's what I did. I sold it eventually for like a thousand dollars, right? It still had a creative value because like rappers would wear it like a little baby, so it was like a, a special piece. It wasn't right. just a regular Chrome Hearts hat. And with stores like that, it was like you have to like kind of book an appointment to buy those items. You can't right. just buy that on chromehearts.com. So it's like, it's more of a exclusivity type of item. So it'll have a resale value. So sometimes there could be something like that that I still might own that still has a resale value that I know like if I'm buying it, it has a purpose. I know I can resell this again. Even if it's used, I can at least break even, right? But nowadays, like, man, I'd rather wear Crocs and just like regular stuff. Like I still can know how to make it look good if I want to like go out and look nice. Um, but the reason to make more money is for my son. Like I want to build up, you know, actual like trust funds and I want to actually, you know, have money for him when he gets older, like to go to school, whatever he wants to do. So that shit matters. I can't just be constantly every fucking month breaking even, living check to check, breaking even, breaking even, breaking even. So I have to scale up and make more money and, you know, pumping more content on YouTube can kind of do that, but it doesn't necessarily do it right away. So now thankfully with like a... You know, I have a Patreon account where people uh, subscribe to Patreon and they pay, and that'll make at least like four hundred to five hundred dollars a month. Well, so you have more control on the Patreon. Because yeah, I can do whatever I want right. on there, and the, you know, and that'll make that'll make like four hundred to five hundred dollars a month, three hundred dollars a month. You know, and that'll alleviate things. You know, so I'll, I'll be able to like, okay, now I can fill up the tank more, more consistently. I can do certain things like that. It still ends up being reinvestments. Um, you know, to everything that I do already. But it'll create more leeway. You know, I can start saving some money on the side to, you know, in case I do have to take a trip to LA to interview an artist randomly now. Or if I want to, you know, eventually now I'm thinking about um buying a newer laptop because my laptop sucks. It's like a 2017 MacBook. It's always overheating and I'm still able to pump out all this content. But like people don't understand behind the scenes, I'm literally putting ice packs on my laptop, like literally having to put ice packs on top of the laptop to fucking cool it fucking down. Because if not... If it overheats, the the screen does like this glitching effect. 
thank God it hasn't done a glitching effect that is like it's permanent. It's like a glitching effect that is like just from overheating. So I'm like, okay, I'm able to understand this this little little um. I have like a loophole around it. If I put some ice, it'll calm it down, you know. But it's like, I told my girlfriend the other day, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, I need to start. Like, I need a better laptop. Like, my content is too good. I'm pumping so much content out that if I have a better laptop, I'll be able to pump it out even faster. Because the upload, download speed will be even quicker. Like, the, everything will be moving faster. The editing will be faster. I if mean, a, hey, I got my stuff on back market, so maybe you go on there. Oh, I got I to look into that. That's like a website? Uh, dude, I buy all my electronics there, and I'm an IT guy, and I get them for, like, dumb cheap because it's on back market. And, like, they're doing YouTube ads now, which is funny. So, so hold on. This is an unofficial ad for back market. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about ads? This back is an unofficial market. ad for back market. If you need a used back laptop. I got to check them out. That sound, that, the name sounds dope. It sounds like it's cheap. Like, it's no, affordable. Like I, so, the, so, the iPhone that I record the videos on, I got back on market. back market. And even my my Pixel is from back market. Like I don't, I just buy my I buy all my phones and stuff out right now because of that friggin' site. That's crazy. Yeah, unofficial ad for back market. Wish segue. What made you put to, like what was the determining factor? If not to interrupt your train of thought, yeah, yeah. What, what was the determining factor? It was like, yeah, I need to start selling ad packages. And how did you price them? So people would reach out for me to me for years to like, oh, promo IG story promo, kind of promo promo promo. Do you do any ad promo? Blah blah. blah pay for promo. I would say no. Because I always feel, to this day, like I keep saying, like business fucks up creativity. So like, if I'm getting paid to post something, I'll feel like... Mm. But then you got to you gotta pay the rent, pay the studio, exactly. keep the lights so then on now, and that kind of thing. Exactly. So now I'm looking at it, it was like, ooh, stop thinking that fucking way. I'm talking to myself like, yo, you got to stop thinking that way. Like, bro, you are a fucking business major. You have a business. You have a very popular business in Rhode Island. Take it serious and do advertisements. So I'm like, okay. Let me start doing them. So certain people that have reached out, I'll respond to them, you know, to do advertisements. I built out my own, I built, I created my own flyer of like ad packages. And the first rendition of it months ago, you know, it was like a starter base of like $250 to post like on Instagram. Like, oh, if you pay me $250, I'll create an Instagram post for you, you know, promoting you your- that number, by the way? Because I think that's always interesting too, is how people come to the numbers that they charge. To be honest, I used, um... I saw, I think it was older though. I don't think she uses it that price point anymore, but someone sent me, or I think it was online, like a PDF file link to um, uh, Buns and Bites, Laura. So Laura, oh, so Laura, okay. So Laura had like uh, created her own flyer that she would send to businesses and like create like a, uh, like price points and like stuff. Like her pricing menu, basically. Her menu of services. Exactly. Businesses. Exactly. You know, um, and I was gonna eventually because she's she's so cool and, her, and her, shout out to her husband they're so they're so awesome so um they, oh, they showed me a lot great. of love like in my interview I was just like getting so much just education from her and she was no they awesome. showed me a lot of love and when I gotta lie it it is surprising in a sense where it's like not just because she's big in like what she does but I think it's more me stereotypically because you know locally I don't know like I get love from my generation and my people people that look like me people of color. But I've always kind of felt like locally in Rhode Island, like, I don't know, like, like the white older people kind of just, I don't know, not that they don't fuck with me, but like, they don't fuck with me. Like, you know, like they might know what I do, but they don't really want to act like they do. It's weird. It's like a weird thing that I struggle with. Um, I don't know if it's just my conscious or if I'm going crazy about it, but I kind of feel like I do see it. Dude, I'm old and white and I struggle with it. Yeah, it's <laughs> weird, man. And I, yeah, and I get like, it because like these people have been here for years doing this shit. It's like, I get it. You know, and with Laura, I kind of was like, oh, is she, how if she's not that way? Is she going to be that way? You know, and she wasn't that way at all. She's so awesome. Um, So eventually I felt like I was, I wanted to hit her up um, to like ask her about that. Give me some advice. Cause I know she does that, right? That's what she does. She said it here. Like that's what she does for a living. When I interviewed her, I'm like, that's amazing. Like, I can't believe I'm not doing that. Right. Um, And I feel with me, I am all encompassing. Whereas like Laura does food. So stereotypically all her advertisements is just food, right? But with me, it could be anything. It could be food. It could be a real estate company. It could be an event. It could be, you know, a product, whatever you want. Because I feel like I have that sort of all-encompassing energy, you know, that face. I feel like I could sell it. You know, I could do I could do some cool stuff, some organic, like, ideas. If I really fuck with them, like, oh, I already had an idea in mind. Let's do this this way. On location. Like, yo, I can pull up there. I can do this here. Right? Um. So what I did was just respond to people that already were h hitting me up. Right at first, and I I came to that price like two fifty, um, but I I slowly started realizing like I definitely am un I was I was very underpriced compared to like the work I was putting in. I'm like, bro, I'm like, 
I'm driving to these places, you know, I'm like editing all this video, it's high quality, engagement on online is huge, like I'll get, my engagement is bigger than my following. I'm about to hit three, uh, 30,000 followers on Instagram, but... I think we got 375K on YouTube. Yeah, 375K on YouTube, but like my views would be... Because stereotypically, people say like, oh, you'll be lucky to just get 10% of your followers. That's like a stereotypical thing on Instagram. If you get 10% of your followers engaging, like you're lucky. With me, it's like higher than that. Like it would be like almost borderline 50% of my followers engaging all the time. So that's that's huge. So... When it came to that, I'm realizing like, yo, I got to start charging more. So I have like a higher price point that I have right now for that was like around 400 to 450 for like an Instagram post. Um, but to be honest, even with that, like I haven't, I need to be more on it. Like I'm not, I still have, I've never posted on my page or anywhere. Hey, I do advertisements. I'll say it on the podcast. Or like, hey, his, this is how to work with me to do advertising. Yeah, I'll say on like on a podcast, hoping like someone might listen, you know. And sometimes like one 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 time they didn't, like, oh, I actually was already listening. I want to work with you in this way. Or I'll say during a reaction, but I haven't posted stereotypically how people post like an Instagram story. I do ads, promo, hit me up, or in their bio. A lot of people put in their bio, email right here for uh, business advertisements. I've never done that yet. Um, and luckily I have a lot of inquiries to the point that I might not need to do that, but I want to do it soon because I just want to see who hits me up. Like I want to gauge it. And I also, I got to generate more. I got to do way more. Like, I feel like I could be doing three to four of those type of ad ads a month and it'll help me financially. Um, because I have a package. It starts at that. That would just be like just for Instagram posts, but I have a package where it's like, if you want to do sponsorship for the podcast it'll be like similar to the same price from the instagram or i'll do like a bundle package if you want to do both you want an instagram post um and you get sponsorship on the podcast do two you get a cheaper price a bundle package but even then is like everything i'm doing keeps growing so i know eventually i gotta like scale up the prices more because for example um the instagram post is not even just an instagram post i'll include in the package you'll be like oh i'll post you on my instagram on my tiktok and I'll tweet it out, you know. So when it comes overall, we're talking about 120,000 followers, millions of impressions on those accounts all the time. So who knows who's going to see that, that that stuff, right? So if I'm including all that into just $400, I feel like people are getting more bang for their buck. Every time I work with someone, you know, especially recently, they've always been saying like, bro, you're under, you're undervaluing yourself. Like you're underpricing yourself. And I'm like, what? You think so? I guess. Uh. But it goes back to me. Like, I don't want to, overcharge because in the beginning I, I don't even want to charge i don't want to charge nobody because it's that whole conundrum of like how do i determine yeah the it's price? like what the fuck is going on here yeah. you know and then, then, but then you're like oh wait i can charge more and get more money crap like this, yeah it's like what the fuck dance. is going on you know so it's scary because it's like lord knows how many you know how much money these other people are charging you know i haven't asked like buns and bites and laura and them now because i think that rate was a flyer it was like an old flyer i forgot who gave it to me someone sending me it i think they forwarded me an email that they got but it was like older but I just like the idea that she even had a flyer. I'm like, oh shit. Aside from her price point, I'm like, I got to create a flyer. Like, I'm not just going to be emailing someone. Like, I could do a cool email, but I want to create like a graphic, almost something that you can damn near print, like for them to make it a easier. A menu Exactly. Like a fucking menu, right? So uh, that's the perfect you word. A this, menu. You want this, price. You want this, this price. Exactly. You want custom consulting, this price. Like, exactly. You want this to be determined, but the consultation costs you this much. Exactly. So now, you know, and I'm able to provide that now with like Rhode Island Lottery. Just, just pay me a fee. I'll, I'll run your business stuff for you. <laughs> You know, like Rhode Island Lottery and like these people, you know, the city and certain like actual more of a corporate thing that wants to reach out and work with me. You know, thank God I have that now. I have a graphic. I have things scaled up where I can do that. But even then, you know, I know that I like, damn, I should maybe charge more. You know, so it's like a weird conundrum. Like, you know, and because you don't have like a businessy or business focused person. Yeah. It's just like you got to do it yourself. So it's like. Exactly. Exactly. You know, but. I am willing eventually to scale it up because I realize, like, you know, if I charge more, I'm able to pay a friend. Like, hey, I'll give you $100. Just come come with me for the day and just film me. Or you me. can hire an employee to help with other things. Exactly. You know, especially if it keeps up consistently, I can damn near give a fucking, uh, get a salary for someone or something. So... And then you can focus on the business. Exactly. So I'm going to start doing that more. Um, because I do think, like I said, people really respect me. They love me. But I just never want fucking, like, 
take advantage of that. Like, I don't, I don't want to, like, misuse that. So oh. that's where it's, like, a sticky situation. It's like, I don't know. This is leading into some other good questions <laughs> down the line. <laughs> Speaking of that, actually. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of, like, you're doing everything yourself, it's hard to find a good partner that you can trust. You're partnering with these brands to do their ads. Like, not partnering, but, like, you're, you are. Like, you're yeah. letting their brand name be on your stuff. 100%. It leads to a question. I don't know if you're... Are you familiar with the whole podcast one cast media controversy? I, I don't know how familiar... Because it is affecting the world of podcasting, so I don't know if you're familiar with it. Is it, it the not. guy that scammed Theo Vaughn? Yes, the Colin Thompson dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. it's funny because 100%. the way it got brought to light was the wrestling podcast hosted by Jim Cornette. 100%. And he was like, I'm not taking this guy's crap. And then he put it out there. This guy was a scammer. And then all of a sudden, it came out the woodwork. The short version, ladies and gentlemen, if, if you're not yeah. familiar with this, ladies and gentlemen, they, them, whatever happened to call yourself... I mm-hmm. want to make that a little correction. <laughs> uh, is basically there was this guy named Colin Thompson. He ran this podcast company, and one of the things he was he was getting in the rooms of these bigger bigger podcasters yeah. like your Jim Cornettes and Theo Vons and stuff, and Brennan would say, Schaub. "Hey, I have a sales team and a marketing team. We will get you ads, bigger ads, to deal with these bigger companies." And mm-hmm. I never understood why these podcasts that are so big just didn't hire their own sales teams, but that's a whole other question. Yeah, or fucking do it themselves. Or do it themselves. Or or hire a person to do it for them. But anyway, basically this guy was like, I will get you certain like types of ads and certain types of money, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. What happened was he was, it was like a Ponzi scheme in the sense he's paying off the bigger guys, but then the people that were smaller were not getting money or, and even the bigger guys like Brendan Schaub wasn't getting paid for like months on end. He was only getting paid fractions of what he was supposed to get. Um, Jim Cornette was doing that, but what's funny, I love how it's the the pro wrestling guys because that business is so insane anyway, especially from the time Cornette did it with his territories that he's like, I'm used to do these kind of knife fights. So he just <laughs> took him to task and like, of all people, it's that guy. And then Coffeezilla did an expose. The reason why it's like a Ponzi scheme is because he was like buying himself like a new, brand new house, like the guy who ran the company and then was only paying out partial checks. Then he was take he was telling the smaller guys to take a pay cut essentially so he could pay off the bigger guys. Then he gets bought out by a company called Cast Media. I don't know if it's he had Podcast One and then Cast Media bought him out or if it's the other way around. Basically another company came in, bought him out because mm-hmm. they wanted his roster and he's still producing podcasts, which is weird. But now he's he's telling these other people thinking they'll just take it if they're not big enough they don't have lawyers hey you're gonna take this pay cut but you'll get paid in the form of stock in cast media but the stock is worthless yeah yeah and it's a whole weird thing um they, the, they sell them some equity it probably sounds good like oh you get some equity right but the equity sucks and it's yeah. just, and, it, and that's just basically being used to pay other people hence the Ponzi scheme thing and this guy will probably be brought up on federal money charges right, yeah, like, yeah. After, especially after the Coffeezilla thing um, they're gonna probably do like a good ass documentary eventually on all that oh, shit oh I'm waiting for that that shit's gonna um, be good but the reason why I bring that mm-hmm. all up mm-hmm. is how important is it not just the people you partner with from a business sense, but like the people you do ads for? Because especially if it's like not a company you would normally rock with, like how, like, does that ever enter your mind? Like, oh, I got to surround myself with the right people because if I don't, or yeah, if I don't yeah. talk to the right people, this could take me down. No, yeah, hundred percent. Um, You know, locally, I'm a bit more biased. Whereas like, if you are from Rhode Island, you know, just the fact that you are a business in Rhode Island, I just love supporting. You know, I want to like, especially the, the the newer, like, like I think the first, who was my first paid local ad? I think it was uh, Destiny. This young girl, young Dominican girl, Destiny, she has this company, Vita Swim. She has like her own bikini, bikini line, independently owned. And literally, like, I was a part of her launching it. Like, she reached out to me. She's like, hey, do you actually like do any paid promo? And I'm like, hey, by the way, um, no, but coincidentally, like this week I've been working on like trying to do like a package or something because, you know, people have been asking me so much and I feel like I want to do it. So I don't want to tell you no. So give me your email. I'm going to reach out within a week, et cetera. And we ended up doing it, you know, and it got good engagement. People loved it. Um, and it was fun for me where it's like, damn, I'm really, it's like, oh, I'm really doing this. And it, it felt cool where it's like, Instead of me just co-signing someone, you know, this is also a job. The co-sign is the job. But then I re- I remember that where it's like, oh, the co-sign in general is important. And there's power in your co-sign. Exactly. You know, so, you know, I, I do make sure to have some sort of familiarity with whoever I'm doing a promo with. Um, I'll visit the place, you know, I visited dispensaries, um, you know, 
I'll, I'll have meetings like prior. But even then, me doing that makes me want to like charge more. Whereas like, thank God I'm not doing $200. If I'm only charging someone $200, right? Yeah, it is a business tra- transaction. But $200, shooting 4K film, you're traveling to them, you're meeting with them, let's say a week ahead that of before. That seems like almost underpriced. Yeah, it's, a, it's, exactly, it's, like, it's like you're doing too much work, right? But me, I come from a very poor family. Even to this day, we're poor. Like my mom's on, still on Section 8. Like it's still f- still poor, right? Perspective-wise, they see this guy, you know, he's popping. He got the clout, the views. But don't get me wrong. It's still very, it's a poor circumstance. This is all just, you know, bear with me. It's like, not like I'm driving a Lambo. Yeah, no. Like, like my car right now, the, the Lincoln SUV is like, Aesthetically on camera it looks good. The leather's oh amazing, right? But bro, when I peel out of here, if you if I peel out before you, you're gonna be able to hear the fucking control arm suspension back. It's it's bad. I gotta go to the mechanic on on Thursday, hopefully. Um, but you know, it, what the fuck was I saying? To, I, so yeah, so like, so me getting two hundred dollars at all for something that I might do for free, do content, I already do content. You're like, this is a plus. Exactly. I'm like, fuck, this is something. This is crazy, right? So it felt good, but there's like, don't under fucking value yourself. Don't undersell yourself. Hold up. You gotta start charging more. And you gotta actually realize what the hell you're doing, you know, because realistically, no one said no to any of my prices so far. So I'm like, is that a bad thing too? Like, hmm, no one's really like haggling or negotiating me. You know, and, my, and I put into like the package, I'm like, oh, free consultation in case you guys want any business advice. I could give you some consultation advice, marketing advice. So it's like, damn, that's a, that's a lot for the price, right? So um, I still do, I, I even if it is a local business, I'm biased. Like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll promote you, but I do meet with them. I'll talk to them, have exchanges with them. Um, and, and yeah, and for, but to be honest, every single one of them probably so far that I've done, has been people that I either know directly or they know someone that I know directly. Like, it'll be like, oh, I'm your best friend's sister or some shit. Like, you know, like someone that I know. Um, so that's how it's been so far. But there's been, uh, you know, in the past, I've been reached out by um, f- uh, feet pick companies, like feet, f- uh, f- uh, photo companies that sell photos of feet, like websites that sell photos of people's feet. Like, it's like a big thing, right? Like, people have their, you know, everyone has their kink, you know, God bless. But there's people that make a living off this selling feet pics, right? And there's companies that reached out via email for, like, promo. Um, One time, a guy reached out, I think, for, uh, what are those, not the jewel pens, but what's that concept called when people do that? Oh, vaping? Vaping, like a vaping company. So, so a vape pen company. Like a vape company. Um, And... I won't. Might, I might not say no directly, but I just might not respond. It's like, gotcha. uh, cause it's like, yeah. it's like shit that I don't fuck with too much, you know. It's like, uh, even when I do, I do. I, I right now we have a partnership with um Underdog Fantasy, but with them, it's not even like they're not paying us directly. Like, whoever, if we make people sign up, we get paid from the signups. Because that's another thing too. Like I've seen like f- personal finance YouTube c- content creators, and they and I think they should get yeah. dragged through the mud because of this endorse things like FTX and then everybody got pissed when FTX was doing what they're doing and they're like you got paid a ton of money from FTX and I and like you didn't get hurt even though you're on YouTube saying well I got hurt too it's like I got really hurt and it's just like now yeah now, I had a bunch like, of people now, like that now, reach out. now their own fans are going on their YouTube pages be like hey you SOB and like they and, and it's like it's important like yeah, who, you, I had, who you advertise with I had a bunch of people like that reach out I had um NFT companies reach out to like do NFTs for us a lot of that shit during that time that I just turned down because I'm like, this is too sketchy. Because sometimes people got to realize, like, if it sounds too good to be true, it's too good to be true. Speaking of that. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard of this uh, article? And it's been going around for a little bit now. Um, and it's called The the Shitification of Platforms. Mm, you ever no. read that? I'm gonna, all right, I'll send this to you because I think you'll find this fascinating. Sounds but cool. It's basically this article breaking down. This is for like a tech writer, and he's also very well versed in like he's like he's also a sci-fi author. But basically, he breaks down and he says it's happening to TikTok right now. But ba- and as I was reading, I was like, oh, this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Now I want to get your take on it because he basically says that a platform will come out and it'll be free, but it'll be free at a loss because they want to attract people to make content on it. Mm-hmm. 
all right so that they get it they get enough people to make content and the way he the way he broke it down was basically and i've mentioned this on the show earlier too on other episodes but he broke it down as like the person in the carnival thing so it's like okay we have this platform we need to get people to make content on how do we do that yeah well and this is the reason why he chose tiktok because tiktok had revealed that they have like the heat button Mm. Where they can go to any creator and just hit a yes, button yes, yes, it's a, with the I'll algorithm, and it'll make and it'll make them blow up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not blow up because it's organic, but it'll blow up because TikTok, mm-hmm. not even the algorithm, TikTok just yeah, yeah, decided yeah. you're gonna blow up. Yeah, and the reason why they do that is because they get all the they get all the content, the free people, right? And but it's the it, they're selling this idea of that. Hey, you can blow up and be viral and make money too, but can you really? And the reason why he says the carnival thing, it's like going to a carnival. The games are rigged at a carnival. But the carnival has to let at least a guy or a gal or they, them or whatever, they at least let some people win the giant teddy bear prize. Yeah. Because that's free advertising for them. Mm. Because then you see a person walk with the free teddy bear and you think, oh, that game must not be rigged. That person won a teddy bear. So I can go win if I, but you really can't. It's rigged. They just let the person win. Yeah. And he says, what happens is that happens. And then what do they do? They get all this attention. Now we're going to sell the data to advertisers and advertisers can do very honed in ads and mm. things like that. Once they exhaust that part, then they're going to start charging on the app itself mm. because they can't make any more money from that. St- st- yeah, yeah. So it's the end, the, the shitification of platforms. Yeah. Recently, a uh, YouTube channel called how money works, which I really like. I think um, I've seen their stuff. Yeah. So they just did a thing about how YouTube needs to get worse before it gets better. Mm. And they were highlighting how that there's going to be a change in how they're going to disable ad blockers, but that might piss off the YouTube audience and how, and the person who made this video of why need YouTube needs to get worse and actually why they need to, they need to pay creators on YouTube less yeah. for the platform to actually survive. Um, and it goes into things like, uh, YouTube makes a little bit bit of money on a lot of people whereas netflix makes more money on less people but it's higher quality and the reason why youtube content looks the way it does is because the earliest forms of tv that were cheap to make were news and you know like reality shows and stuff and even like the highest youtube content looks like the most mid-budget tv show yeah um the reason why i ask all of this is that you know he's basically saying hey youtube's going through its shitification right now yeah and you do a lot on youtube does it ever concern you that like I need to diversify or like, Hey, maybe I'm too tied to one platform. If that platform, because goes through its shitification, basically, yeah. um, it messes with people's money. And then sometimes people can't transition to another app or another platform. Does that ever cross your mind? Like, Hey, I'm really tied to YouTube. It's making me money. But what happens if YouTube just decide and they can decides to like F the whole thing up? Yeah, it does. It does. Um, concern me. That's why I've definitely, um, you know, at, f- at first, I was one of those people that doubted, like, TikTok, like, what is this shit? What's going on? But now I've calculated TikTok to the point where it's, like, I'm a master at making, like, these clips, like, these viral, like, 9 by 16 clips, you know, short segment moments from podcast conversations, interviews, etc. At first, it was annoying to edit those, but now I can edit those like that, like, pretty pretty smooth line. Um, So I've been able to transition and build up a following on TikTok. Now I'm nearing uh close to 100,000 people just on TikTok alone. So... That was pretty cool to see the growth with that and see the success rate success rate with that. Um, now I'm trying to do more long form on X on Twitter, post like longer form segments from the podcast. I think I put up the when I interviewed the councilman um Luis um Miguel I think two weeks ago Miguel Sanchez um uh on Twitter and I did decent amount of numbers I think like 10k views something like that. Um, but because I have been feeling like, yeah, YouTube, I, I'm all, but the thing is, I'm always on YouTube, but I do feel a sense of like, where, when it came to the censoring, right? Even though like, yeah, like I, I hated a lot of the takes that, um, like, uh, a Steven Crowder would have, like, I hated a lot of his takes. I'm like, well, this guy is like, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, who's another example? Uh, that Andrew was take- Tate. Andrew Tate, like Andrew Tate, I'm like, oh, these oh, guys. Oh, Sneeko in there. He's got yeah, Sneeko, Sneeko as well, right? Um, and especially Sneeko, because Sneeko's a uh, Sneeko's a good example because Sneeko was banned on YouTube literally a year ago, I think last week. But now Sneeko is the number one person on person Rumble, on Rumble like by a landslide too. Like I, I'm shocked. I didn't even know that until last week. I'm like, he's bigger than Andrew Tate. Like I never checked the rankings. I'm like, this guy's bigger than Andrew Tate on Rumble. That's incredible. But it goes to show you, like you know, as long as you have a, a loyal fan base, you can reposition and re 
you know, go somewhere else. But I struggled with that at first because when I opened the Patreon at first, it wasn't as successful at all. Like, it's, it's, it's still decent today. Like, I have, like, I think, like, 80 to 100 people consistently every month on there. Um, but I feel like nine times out of ten, they might just be on there supporting. They're not necessarily just interacting with the content on there because they know they can get it a version of it on YouTube, you know, but they'll be able to support. Like, they always want to support, you know. They always want to interact with on that or pay or, you know, have someone else, or one of their friends join or join the Discord. Like, they're going to also do some sort of funneling of their interaction with the Patreon at some point. Um, but, you know, if YouTube were to die randomly... Man, it it would be a scary it would be a scary moment. I would have to just wait wait to see what the fuck I would do at that point. But I do know that short form content, I've been able to master it. And I at first I hated it because, like I said, I didn't grow up like that with short form. I'm not on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok like looking at people's TikToks. I'm not doing that. If people send me a TikTok, I'll look at it like oh. And nine times out of ten, I might not even check it out right away. Like Marloon always sends me TikToks. I'll check it out like. Two days after, my mom might send me some TikToks. I look at it like, uh, oh, two days after, like I don't, I don't, not on there like that. Um, even Instagram, surprisingly, for a time, I felt like I was addicted to like Instagram and like updating on my TL, my timeline, looking at everyone's post. I haven't done that in like two months. Like I'll go on Instagram, and I'll see like the first maybe two posts, check some Instagram stories out. But really, what I'm on tic- on Instagram for is respond to DMs, and. Almost like a newspaper. I'll go to the Shade Room, Academics, too, uh, too Cool to Blog, certain Instagram accounts to get my information, update on shit, to talk about it on the podcast, or to maybe tweet about it, or to just know about it. So that's what I'll do. Um, but those accounts, I don't follow those accounts. I'll just go and search them real quick. The Shade Room, blah, 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 Academics, all these accounts, and I'll read up on, and I'll check out the, the certain interactions, things that's going on. But before, I used to be on Instagram, and like I have to update, like I have to finish it. And I don't know how my timeline looks right now. I want to do it at some point this week. I want to just go and look at the feed and then just update. Um, but I know like t- uh, Instagram after a certain amount of like, if you spend like a week out of it, like it, it won't show you like certain people's posts from, you know, it's not going to show you like, unfortunately, it's not going to show you like a month's worth of posts. Well, uh, well clock also it out. you're like, you're, you're kind of like with the whims of that platform. Yeah. You know, like, like you have to adapt to the platform. The platform doesn't have to adapt to you. Mm-hmm. And that's where Reels, YouTube Shorts, TikTok comes in. I've had very successful YouTube Shorts, but that's one I haven't been able to conquer. For some reason, YouTube Shorts, like no matter what you post on there, I think you have to be more consistent. I have to coordinate a schedule of like maybe posting one short a day. When I post like one TikTok a day, I see like a scale of like more growing. Gotcha. And also with TikTok now, they pay you a good amount of money if you make a video longer than a minute. So that's why all my videos now on TikTok are a minute or longer. Even if it's by a second longer. You know, I, I think I li- was it last month or two months ago. No, no, I think it was last month. It might have been last month. I received like a check from TikTok. Not a check, but they send you it's a deposit of like $500 from TikTok. And that was huge for me. I'm like, $500 from TikTok from me just posting my content? This is crazy. If I post it more, more consistently, get more views. I've seen uh, creators on TikTok now make like, make like $5,000 a month because the long form is what they want. They want you to want the feed them. Yeah, they want you to give me more content, give me more data, make longer videos. Even though it's short form, give us a two-minute video. Give us a minute and 30-second video. They, they want that. The incentive is we're going to pay you more. We're going to pay you. TikTok was never like that. So now there's so many creators on TikTok blowing up, living off of TikTok alone. So I've been able to now like transition, do my short form content, do a bit longer. And I've been thinking about doing some other, other sort of content where it's maybe on the spot, like... Me picking up my phone, literally on camera, talking to the camera, posting on TikTok right away, right when something breaks. Rather than coming in the studio, you know, putting it on camera, you know. But in a perfect world, if I didn't have a girlfriend, if I had no kid, you know, I would live in here. Literally, I would live in the studio pumping out content 24-7. I would be dropping content every day, maybe in a podcast a day, a live show. I would be a streamer. I would be on Twitch. I would be doing all that shit, but I can't, I can't. I just can't. I can't at all. And it's like it's fine because I, I can only do what I can control right now. Speaking of cash, yeah. There's a statement in the title of a book by Eric Bischoff, the guy who started the NWO and wrestling. And if you're a mid '90s wrestling kid, you'll know who the guy is. But yeah, 
this was before even social media was a thing, and he called it controversy creates cash because he did so many controversial things that got attention, and the attention turned into money, yeah. which I think he predicted the future yeah, unknowingly true. enough. How much do you agree with that statement? It's a multi-part question. How much do you agree with that statement? And you were talking about how, like, yeah, if you be controversial, you're going to get attention, but is it worth it? And in certain instances, can you recover from it? Mm-hmm. An example, like, Sneeko, like, he's got his thing on Rumble, but there's a video of him... Because it was like, he posted to YouTube or something, and it was like he meets a bunch of twelve year old kids. Yeah. So a lot of these YouTube people are like, even though they're adults, and even Andrew, they Andrew Tate's are sort of like marketing themselves to like twelve year olds. That's why the thumbnails look the way they do and stuff. Which is yeah, that's, that's a, a whole other that's their age group. That's a whole other concern. But he's got these twelve year old kids coming up to him, and they're like, "Fuck the women, fuck the women," and like, and and he has this look on his face, like he's shocked. Like, he's like, oh, yeah. crap. And he's even telling me, like, no, 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 no. And, and, but it's like, no, that's what you did. This is what you wanted, that's right? That's your effect. You've got 12-year-olds parroting you because they don't know the difference. So the reason why, and like, you know, and I'm going to ask, like, do you pick topics that you know are a hot button or controversial? And like, how much do you push that envelope? But I also noticed that you said earlier, like, hey, I don't want to tell kids to drink. But there's probably other, some other guy or a gal or somebody out there saying that they're like, yeah, I'll tell kids to drink links. I'll get me attention. I'll get me more money. But do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. So like, how do you navigate the whole, like, let's, let's talk about this hot button controversial thing, but also not be jerks and promote negative stuff to 12 year olds because you don't want to do that. Yeah. But then what stops somebody else from doing that? Because all they care about is money and they don't care if a 12 year old like ends up over ODing on God knows what yeah. or ends up being like a little jackass or gets hurt because they're like, well, I'm not their parents. Yeah. So like, wh- like how do you, how do you navigate talking about controversial or like pushing controversial content? But like, where is the line? Is there a line? What's the line for you? When should censor- cens- censorship kick in? Yeah. Like, or should it not kick in? Yeah. I think when it comes to me, I really don't censor myself. I, I I keep it just organic. Like I think attention is gonna bring money. Yeah, I mean, like when you generate attention, it's gonna cause you know it's gonna lead into money. Like the quote, like the famous, you know, is, is accurate. The idea of like more generating attention, you know, that is gonna lead to more financial gain, right? But me personally, I growing up, I always felt like, oh, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a billionaire. But now, realistically. Where, with where I am right now, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be like super duper rich. Not, I don't want to aim to be like a live life like a Drake. That's not what my goal is. My goal is to be honest: is if I'm able to, you know, have a car that has no issues, maybe get a new car that has zero miles. It could be damn near any fucking car that has zero miles at this point because I'm always dealing with frustrating po- uh, problems with my used cars. Um, have a house, you know, have a house for my son, space for my son. I'll be able to move out where I live right now, horrible neighborhood. You know, I'll be able to move out of there. If I'm able to do those certain things and then still do everything else, I'm fine. So I'm not pressed to like, fuck, we got to, we got to, like, they're talking about, you know, they're saying some anti uh, transvestite type things, homophobic things. It's working for them. Let's do it. We got to do it. I, I don't think that way. You know, I will never think that way because that's just not, it's not organic. Organically to me, it doesn't feel right. And at the same time, I get as big as engagement as they do, just not as consistently. I'll have viral moments and viral clips that'll do crazy numbers by just being myself, right? So I feel like if I keep this up, let's say for 10 fucking years more, at least... Who knows the larger scale of an audience I'm going to grow, right? As long as it's to the point where it's like I'm able to hire a team, hire staff, get a bigger studio, maybe produce more podcasts for people, you know, generate podcasts for people that might make them money and then maybe make me some money, at least enough to break even. I don't got to necessarily make money off them, but something that is like, you know, it's a business. It's something that's running. And then also maybe able to afford to maybe do some nonprofit work help some kids start their own podcast for free, some young kids in school, then I'll be happy. I'm not aiming to be like on a level where, because people got to realize like a Sneeko, he is on, I think like a $100 million contract. These guys are getting millions, like crazy money, right? So in their mind, 
they're fucking going crazy because they think like, oh shit, hundred million dollars. Let me go. I, oh, this is. I got to keep doing. If this, I did it this way by doing all this, all these antics. Let me go deep. Let me go crazy. I got to do it even more. Let me I'm, double down, triple down. So that's what they're doing. But people don't see that. I see that. So for me, I'm not necessarily like hundred percent fuck them. I'm like, mm, fuck what they're doing. But I get it. Like it's working for them. Does it ever concern you that some of these people get so big, like, like even like whether it's pop stars or their fan bases because social media, where they're like. God forbid you even make like a critical comment of a yeah. certain artist. Yeah. I made a critical comment and it was just about I think I think this artist has gotten to the point where their fans are cult like. Yeah. And I th- and I and I just said like like this is crazy that the the fans are cult like. And one of them, one of the fans, I won't say the artist or what the conversation was, but one of the, I just made that that comment just being like <laughs> I think it's I think it's nuts when like we're live we like that that song cult of personality we're living in that right mm-hmm. now. And the person messaged me. It was like, "Yup, if they told me to go kill uh, a, this, this, these type of people, I'd gladly do it. And I'll fucking kill you too. And I'll gladly do it with a smile on my face. I would do whatever they say." I'm like, "Does anyone think that's a little insane? That like we are like literally personalities are now becoming like deities to some people, where it, like it's like cult like behavior. And like, does that ever cross your mind? Like, no, it's it's happening. It happens with um, Nicki Minaj stands are huge with that. Um, Kanye stands are huge with that lately. Um, the stanism but like what is like, like, say, like, like saying like i'm willing to murder and i think wasn't that that show um swarm or whatever like the the, the joint by uh Gamb- uh donald glover i still haven't watched that show i gotta yeah, watch but that it, but it was like i gotta watch basically that, that taken to like a hyper yeah, like, about. like a hyper insane like logical endpoint. i gotta watch that show i skipped it like a dumbass i gotta watch that because I, I i was the one that posted the clip from the show that went viral my clip went viral of um the sex scene uh with um who was it? I think it was Chloe Bailey and I think it was Donald Glover. I think they were having sex together. I think it was that that's who it was, I think. Um from that show Swarm. But yeah, that shit is, is annoying when it gets like you also have to have thick skin, right? So is it, I can't speak for everyone, but for me I have thick skin. For example, I had I think it was like a Cardi B stand. I thought it was a Nikki stand, but I think it was actually a Cardi B stand that was coming at me on Twitter. When I think Nicki Minaj tweeted me and then they were like trying to be like, fuck you, like blah, blah, blah. So they took like my header photo, which was my son. And like they screenshot it and they repli- replied back saying that he was like ugly, some weird, like dumb shit. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Right. But it didn't bother me because I'm like, I have a thick skin. All I did was like, oh, let but, me block no, but, them. But if they put a bullseye and said we're going to fucking kill him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because there are people like there and are people it's, and it's that, that, that will be willing to do that. And yeah, it's yeah. like, that's insane. Yeah, no, no, hundred percent. And and you know, I've had people locally that might say certain things in comments, like, hmm, but I'll talk to them. I'll DM them, like, hey, what are you what's going on here? What do you mean? Especially when it's locally, because I was like, I can see you at any point. So for you to like talk disrespectfully, like, let's just talk it out in the DM. Like, let's not what do you mean? What's going on here? Like, what are you what's going on? We can agree to disagree, an opinion is okay. But then when you go to disrespect, if it's strangers online, it's whatever. But then locally, when it's like someone that I like, or like they'll dox you and like reveal your address or something like that, or like, oh, or like, like pe- I've seen people do crazy shit. Like, oh, like here's this person's um, child coming out of school. When you know, what I mean, it's like yeah, what yeah, is yeah, wrong yeah. with people? Yeah, that's happened. Nicki Minaj stands have done a lot of shit like that, especially between Cardi B. It gets weird, man. It gets very weird. But listen, man, I grew up in the streets, and I, you know, I know people, etc. But I am not scared to call the cops. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm also not scared to defend myself. But, like, I, I can teeter both fences. Whereas, like, if it, God forbid, it were to come that way, like, there's ways to protect yourself. But then, for someone that's never experienced it at all, I understand where it's like, that's fucking, like, what the fuck is this? Like, what the fuck? But I grew up, you know, with the YouTube, bro. The YouTube comments were, like, insane. Especially, like, older YouTube comments. Bro, we would get threats. Like, aside from people hitting us up that they were you know, going through suicide, like, inspiring messages and connections with the fans. We've had a, a lot of experiences, like, Marloon uh, would be called called fat every day. Like, he was so insecure about it that he had to, like, step away from doing videos on, on camera because people would make fun of his weight all the time. Like, it was, like, a constant thing. You know, get that fat guy all, out of the back seat of the car. Like, all the fucking time. It's like, yo, what the fuck is up with people? But I personally have built thick skin about it, you know, especially with like, certain accounts that just have no... 
person. Like, who is this person? Or that they're making trolling accounts. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I'm like, oh, I, I see what you're doing here. Um, but I do like thought-provoking people. So I was like, if I have an opinion on something, like I did the Chris Brown take, and I was like, you know, I felt like people need to um, scale back on the Chris Brown hate because all of a sudden, um, Selena Gomez and Tanache have like these kind of like mm, anti-Chris Brown takes and moments. And I'm like, oh, but they've shown Chris Brown love in the past. They've worked with him. So they've like, done things. Why now? So it's like, why now, right? But then people took that as me like defending um uh, a woman abuser. Like certain like comments on there, like they're like, mm, why are you why are you defending a woman abuser? Like, what are you saying? Like, are you a woman abuser? Like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, um, no, wait a minute. That's not what I'm saying. But I'll let them create their thoughts and it's like, you know, they can think whatever they, they desire. But no, I'm not. This is not that. Like I've had moments in the past where I've called out women abusers. I've called out Chris Brown himself. Just in this clip, this one minute clip specifically, I was just trying to highlight, you know, the hypocrisy of Selena Gomez and Tanache. Um, but that's always. I don't mind that. Where it's like it's just opinions, right? I'm just talking about opinions of an artist. But then with that one, it could get sketchy. Where it's like, oh, obviously abuse is like. You, you got to be careful. If you're saying something, they're going to think you're defending him, et cetera, right? So you, you just have to be able to, to, like, know where to teeter the line, right? I'm also not embarrassed to, like I said before, talk to people. I, I'll DM someone about that. I'll DM someone about anything. I'll comment back at people. Be like, oh, no, I, I, I'd, I'll add some more context, right? Because maybe a clip on TikTok doesn't explain everything. I'm doing a fucking two-hour, one-hour podcast. I'm making a one-minute clip. People are going to interpret that one minute clip as just what that one minute was. There's more to it, right? And especially if they never seen me before, they just see this clip. They're but like, because they don't want to see the clip, they're like, because they don't want to see the context around it. Because we're we're more headline readers. We don't read articles anymore. Exactly, exactly. You know, so but I make sure to like, you know, if it's like, it's a, we're talking about Chris Brown, a sensational big name, where it's like, I can talk about, you know, that when it pertains to him because it's just a, a, mus a opinion on a musician. It's not like I'm talking about like Fred from down the street that raped right. two girls and Johnson. Like, oh, why are people still mad at him? Like, I'm not that. I would never. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's where if someone were to be like that, it would be like, take that fucking guy off of like the mic or whatever. Like, that's a what's going on here, right? But I, I'll keep but it. it happens on a larger scale and I want to get to that. In a, that in is true too. That is true with like... um. That is true with like a when it, like when it, when a podcast will intentionally bring on like a controversial guest because mm -hmm. they know it'll get the views, but then it's just like they gotta be careful because like what if that person, especially if they're known for controversy, says something now they're associated. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like like I saw like Joe Rogan said he would never interview Trump. Like you know, I was shocked. You know, but I'm like, you know, I personally feel like, and at first I didn't feel this way. I felt like a long for a long time. I'd be like, I, I wouldn't interview certain people. But now I really feel like I would interview, like, anyone. I literally would interview anyone. It's just, you know, it would be my way. You know, it would be like, you know, depending on the person, it could be a full-blown conversation about maybe their current viral topic. Or it could be, you know, I just genuinely want to know about them as a person. Rather than just the conflict, the issue, whatever their opinion is on this shit. I want to know what the fuck, how they grew up, what's their background, you know, so if I interview them, I can get that. So that's how I look at it. Um, but I do understand where, like, interviewing them comes off as obviously a cosign, right? So I think that's what Rogan was kind of trying to say. Like, if I interview Trump, the whole idea I'm platforming of, him. And then there's the whole idea of, like, but then Rogan's also said, like, well, let, like, and others have been like, well, let, you know, let's put things in the marketplace of ideas. And I'm like, ideally, yes, but mm -hmm. ideally people have never behaved that way. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like the marketplace of ideas thing kind of goes out the window because people love sensationalized things. It's like that other saying, right? Um, don't let the truth get in the way of the good story or like a lie will make it X amount of times around the world before the truth even gets a head start. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, we know you're not platforming, but at the same time, well then like why, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's about being responsible with it. If I feel like if I were to do something where like, for example, I, I'm I'm gonna email them again. I want I'm thinking about doing like, um, a debate here with the CD one, um, Gabe Ammo, so Dem Democratic, and then having the Republican one. Even though obviously Gabe is gonna win, yeah, I still want to have like a debate because I feel like it could be practice for 
you know, larger scale politicians that come in here and have like both sides debate in and here. He, and even these debate channels aren't even really debates. It's more like They're not. people, no, people just want to see somebody dunking on somebody. So, and, and you can tell by the way the, the things are titled and yeah. who's doing it, where it's like, you don't really want to see the debate. Or they'll be like, "Watch well, debate this person. But I'm like, you, just, you don't really want to see a debate. You want to see somebody get dunked on. Yeah, it's just bullshit. Because everything's team sports now, basically. Yeah, it's, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. So I would, I would, I would love to have like conversations like that, you know. And I, and I would be open to like if I were to have <clears throat> one side of someone in here. Let's say I have like a a Biden in here interviewing Biden. I would interview uh whoever else is running. Let's say uh Vivek R- Ramaswamy or you know anyone on the other side. Like I love like. Because me personally, I'll consume both sides of the content, even though, you know, naturally I'm more like, especially when it comes to politics, I'm more of like a liberal left leaning. Um, I I want to intake, especially because I feel like for some reason I've been look, I've been analyzing it more and more. The Republicans on the right side, when it comes to like, even if they're not uh, politicians, just like conservative uh, thought provoking people that just say shit like a uh, Matt Walsh, for example, they have such like an excellent like youtube like the way they, they structure their youtube channels and like their thumbnails i'm like this is crazy that like, leads to my next question actually yeah um because it's funny and i got inspired by this question because i watched uh, a youtube video breaking down it was like why do all right-wing podcasts look exactly the same mm. and he was talking about how like it's very performative the reason why there's like bricks the reason why somebody has a gun it's it's not what they think it's more what they want to present like this is how we present manliness and it's just like almost like a caricature of what manliness is supposed to be rather than like they don't actually like if you actually like look at the creators and the people like um oh god who's the one who interviewed ice cube and that was like a big that was like a big weird thing um the guy from who came from fox but he got outed oh tucker carlson yeah so yeah yeah, tucker carlson but it's funny because he's like like basically their pockets, the reason why they do that, it's performative because like Tucker Carlson is not like a man's man. Like, he went to like Harvard, like he's like high society, but he's trying to portray mm-hmm. himself as the working man. So like, that's why he wears flannel in the video. And that's why he's got <laughs> jeans on. That's why there's brick. Um, the reason why I bring that up yeah. is because it's not only, only in that, like even like you were mentioning flagrant and stuff like that. Yeah. It's formulaic. Yeah. Like there's a formulaic look to podcasts. There's a for like, regardless of right wing, left wing, comedy or not like there's a formulaic look yeah there's a formulaic way to do the thumbnails and then like you have the people doing the thumbnails where it's like Sneeko was doing this but even like mr beast it's always like you know if you're trying to market to kids it's like big bright colors and a thing or like or like even yeah. like even on your thumbnails i've seen like there's a certain rhyme and reason to it yeah yeah i could see why people do that because that's the trend and then they want to make the you know they want to be trend because things that trend generate cash yeah i get that yeah but then also isn't that limiting and also like how do new trends and ideas form if everybody's going after the same trend or if they're contorting themselves to do a trend yeah it seems to be kind of like a paradox what are your thoughts on that yeah i feel like it definitely feels very mechanical and like machine almost like robotic whereas like um the little mermaid black little mermaid you had, I'm pretty sure, everyone. We had a Kenneth Owens, Ben Shapiro, and Matt Walsh probably had. Like, you know the what same, they're going to say. Like, they, like they, you they, almost yeah. know what they're going to do. Exactly. Like they each, like, spoke on it, right? And how it's bad and yeah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Like, not forgetting the irony that a mermaid in those waters would be from the Caribbean anyway. And, like, why would a, <laughs> why would a mermaid, a mythical creature, actually have a certain specific skin tone that makes no goddamn sense? But yeah. anyway, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, you know... uh. A conservative is going to be a conservative. So if they're conservative, they're going to think, oh, well, sh- well should I never change? Why would, you, why would you change Little Mermaid, right? But aside from that, like, they're a good example, but they're almost not because of the fact that they actually are, are I think they're all under the same company, the Daily Wire, I think is the- They got a lot of them, but not all of them. They yeah. got a number of them. But, but specifically, I think those three, I think Matt Walsh, Kenneth Owens, and Ben Shapiro, especially because Ben Shapiro is like an owner of the Daily Wire. But if you look at their thumbnails- like they're the same like aesthetic. Also, it's a weird trend with those people too that it was brought out in the same video that I watched why they all look the same. They're all like failed Hollywood people. Yeah, like Matt Which Walsh is, is gonna be weird thing. he's gonna be like on the Dancing with the Stars. And I remember when I saw the announcements Dancing with the Stars, I'm like, and I said Matt Walsh, I'm like but that like, same yeah, guy? But he, but he had like, a former, oh, wow. But he had a former like career. He tried to make it in biz show business and then he didn't do it. Same with um, Ben Shapiro. He was a like, former Hollywood writer and he didn't do well at it and then he pivoted to this. Yeah, stuff. man. I don't know. It, for me, is like I, I, I respect the business in it, right? Whereas, like, 
for example, Matt Walsh had like I think a video yesterday or something talking about like Columbus Day, like we gotta celebrate Columbus Day, like very like completely against what I believe in. I'm like, what the fuck is this guy? Like he's doubling down. And I'm like, this is the same guy's gonna be on Dancing with the Stars. But I'm like, I guess he's just saying his opinion, but what the fuck is going on? Like, oh man, like, you know, it's like a weird thing where it's like, I used to be totally against people that I just don't agree with, but like, I wouldn't even give a fuck about them. But now I'm at a point where I'm trying to understand at least their business angle. Like, why is this in getting so many numbers? Like, how is this engaging? Let me look at the way he put the words, the title. Like, I can maybe learn from this and apply it my own way. But does it concern you that like, it's just for the views and the engagement and the money and there's and like it just takes away for any and all the creativity. When every, especially when everything starts looking the same. Like um, I'll bring up a controversial podcast, Fresh and Fit, mm. and I literally saw another podcast doing the exact same, and the studio almost looked exactly the same. I think it was in the same building, the same Miami building. I think I know which one you're talking about. And then there's another guy who does like wrestling coverage videos, but he's got the same exact backdrop, almost the same exact thing as like and same presentation style as Coffeezilla. Mm. And I'm just like, at what point, again, it's the whole art versus folk art thing. Like when you're just doing stuff purely for the numbers and the analytics and the data and the and the growth, like, does that become limiting or does that become concerning where it's like, oh, maybe I want to do this something, but I can't because yeah. my, because I'm, because I'm so chasing trends and then what if the trend changes, then you have to like conform to the trend. Yeah. It, it it's, 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 it's interesting. I, th I think about that a lot because it's like, I think it's really more up to yeah, I love this type of conversation because I really I don't talk to no one about this type of shit because I feel like no one in my like close circles parameters really cares about this type of stuff like how I do. But um, but it matters to the success. It matters of, of somebody trying to be in this line of work. But it matters. I think about this type and of stuff a all time. Of it, and it's a weird. And again, it's a weird paradox. How do new trends get created if everybody's chasing the same trend? Yeah. And then what happens if you get sick of a thing? Like there are certain songs I can't listen to now because they've been used on Instagram too damn much, and I'm like I can't do this anymore. No. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, it, it it's something I've analyzed because I've realized where it's like. To me, some of these people might be newer, right? For example, like a Tucker Carlson, you know, I started knowing more about him, I think, like, last year. Top of last year, I'm like, oh. I was trying to look up, like, what are the biggest shows on TV, right? And, like, Fox News and his show would come up. I'm like, oh. And I would see his, his on, on YouTube, his, like, on the Fox News YouTube channel, he'll be, like, the most viewed clips and moments. I'm like, oh. Let me watch some of his stuff. I think actually it might have been two years ago because it was like during like a lot of the Black Lives Matter stuff I would see his like commentary on it um, and disagree with a lot of it but I'll, I'll still be like, damn, this is crazy how many views it's getting. Like just engagement, I'll be like so like, what the fuck? But he's an example where like now, you know, he went against the company that he was working with, right? They fired him and now now he, he's, he doesn't even want to like even be associated, be associated with, them. with them. Like he's very anti them. And now he even had a moment where he was like damn near like regretting shit that he said. Basically confirming like he was like a puppet repeating a lot of or, shit. Or doing it for the views. Doing, or doing it for the, it for, exactly. doing it for the controversy and not really, and it wasn't really his. Exactly. But everybody, so I'm like, was, fuck. But everybody was convinced it was his, it, it was his thoughts. Exactly. And so, it was really so I'm him. like, fuck, this is crazy. Whereas like for me, for me personally, it's entertainment. Like, I'll watch someone I don't I don't agree with because let's say Tucker Carlson he might say a joke I'm like oh that's actually kind of funny like this guy's fucking stupid that's funny but and but it's also endorsing them because you're giving them the watch time which gives them ad revenue and on top of that not just me that's that's for me but aside from me you know what influence is it having on someone else it could influence maybe like we've seen like maybe like oh these white nationalists oh who do they, they listen they start, to or they start doing things in the name of in the name of that content and then the country exactly. like, well, I didn't tell him to do it it's like but come on yeah. like especially and then when they don't like, want to go up against them they don't want to say like um white nationalist by the way I don't fuck with you like you know the only person that's kind of done that was um Eminem when Eminem um was saying like listen if you support Trump etc I don't want I don't, I, I'm not you, you're not my fan like let me draw that line right now I'm like fuck that was a bold move from him because like you did, you never. I think to this day you never seen someone of his his caliber do that. But Eminem did it, right? But like a Tucker Carlson and these people, especially when they were like more corporate related, like they always wanted to like you know wash one hand, wash the you know the other washes the other, whatever the phrase is. One hand washes the other. One hand exactly. So they wanted to like not lose that audience, right? So they were like, hey, uh, you know, like like Trump, like oh, I didn't incite the riot, I didn't do this, you know what I'm saying? Because he doesn't want to, you know, uh, I, do, I don't, I don't uh, uh, they're not rioters. They're not this and that. 
he doesn't want to place like a position. He wants to keep it sort of neutral with them to still have that support with them. And that's where I I wouldn't be at. Too. Yeah, that's where I wouldn't be at. Where I'll be like, listen, hey, if you support me, that's on you. But I don't support you back. I don't support that. I don't stand for that. Like to each their own. But this radical white nationalist, whatever the fuck, this racism, I don't stand for that. Like I'll be I'll be vocal about that. But a lot of these creators will play into that that character of like this is just entertainment. Hold up is not just entertainment. Especially you're influencing when you're people. Saying, when you're saying stuff about real things and you're saying that and you're presenting like it's your opinion, but then you're, you're all of a sudden you're going to be like, well, it's not really my opinion. It's just a shtick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think because um, that came out in the uh, in like the thing with Tucker Carlson, that came out in the Fox News thing where like the voting Fox, shit. Well, also Fox News had to be like, we're entertainment. We're not actual news. Or they like and, they, and like Tucker had to admit it because there was. Documents finding, no, we'll put this out because it's for the audience and the ratings, yeah. even though we know it's not true. Yeah. Which brings me to a question because I know some of your heroes are people like Martin Lawrence yeah, and yeah. Will Ferrell, and you were like, you like their characters. So in your own videos, you know, and yes, these things are your real opinion, but do you ever feel the need, not necessarily to be in character, but almost kind of like being in character a little bit to exaggerate certain things because it's on video? It's almost like um, when I was studying sound. So it was telling me that when you're doing sound for a movie, the reason why Foley and things exist is you can't just have somebody walking in a hallway and record that. It's not going to translate to film. You actually have to like layer it with other shit because then it, it it's something with like psychology of how people view and perceive things. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so like, you know, you can't just like record an actual explosion. Like you have to put 20 different sounds together to make the explosion sound 10 times bigger because then it translates well when you pair it up with what's on the screen. Yeah, yeah. So with that being said, do you ever, do you... You know, because you have heroes like Martin Lawrence who like very big personalities and yeah. very big characters, is there you on screen, the character versus you, the person, are they one and the same? Or is it like wrestling where they say the best wrestling characters are who you really are, hero or bad guy, just cranked up to 11? I think I do that with the reactions specifically. Um, I'll crank it up. I'll definitely crank it up. But it's still you. But it's still me. Yeah. You're not you're not like I'm just saying this to for the con it's like it's still me. I'm just cranking up the personality meter a little bit so it translates better. hundred percent. Like, video. like okay. around my friends, I always have like random jokes, like something like, you know, like I personally have no sense of like I, I, I have no like I'm not embarrassed or ashamed of like to tap into my femininity or whatever. So I'll have jokes, like I'll be openly like I have like a gay joke with a friend. Like I'll be like, "Hey, like don't look at me too much. I might kiss you." Like I might say something like that, borderline of that nature, right? And those type of jokes, I, I find them hilarious because it's like I'm comfortable saying that. But for a lot of, of people I know, they they wouldn't even dare to say that because like they're so they're not homophobic, but like they're so damn near like, oh, I would never, I would never. Like why would you ever say that other that? But for me, I'll be able to chuck it up. Like this is entertainment. Like what are we doing here? Like, like. For example, Drake's title, Drake's album's called For All the Dogs. The actual acronym is F A T D. So it's Fat D. So I played into that. Like, let's let's take it. We're gonna listen to some Fat D. Let's take in this Fat D today. And it's like, whoa, whoa, what do you mean we're taking in some Fat D? Like, like oh, pause. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's like, bro, this is the acronym is For All the Dogs. It's Fat D. We're taking in some Fat D. So it's like I'll play into that and I'll scale that up. Where it's like. That is still me. I might say that in person, but on camera, I might yell it. You know, I'll, I wore the dog mask. You know, I I was barking. You know, I'll play into the actual theme at it, uh, of it because I feel like it also adds to what I was talking about earlier where like Oppenheimer and like Barbie, everyone goes to watch Barbie. It's, it's wearing pink. Everyone went to watch Oppenheimer. Like, no, we can't watch it in regular theaters. Let's go. We got to watch it as a seven millimeter film, IMAX, and Providence. And people were pitting them against each other for like whatever weird reason. Yeah. So like. And if, like that even became a thing. So if there's like an album called for all the dogs, I'm going to have a dog in the reaction. I'm going to wear a dog mask. Right. I've done that. We, we play into that with a scale when it comes to like thematic projects, thematic songs, you know, you know, whenever I can, I'll do that because I feel like it makes it more of an entertaining type of concept. Looking back at it. I should have had a freaking Bible during the Doja Cat reaction because I I wanted to have one, but I forgot because of the fact that Doja Cat's been playing into like the sat Satan imagery, demonic imagery, etc. Right? I just think it's interesting that Doja Cat, Doja Cat, Doja Cat <laughs> was uh, 
dancing for white nationalists and like nobody seemed to care about that. And Nas even called it out on Ultra Black. And I'm like, that's another really y'all don't care. Like y'all are like bumping her in the club, even though like she was like down with white nationalists. And And then you saw she was just dancing in a chat room. I'm like, it was still for white nationalists. Like that's you don't think that's problematic. You saw what she posted this week. She posted a a, her wearing a shirt. Oh, it did? Like, yeah, something like With like, the Nazi like, guy. Like, um, like, but I guess he plays into Nazi. He's like a jokester, but it's like, who but jokes people, about being but, a Nazi? But I don't know. People were like, oh, he's, it's shtick. And I'm like, is it really? Like, yeah, I don't know. I was like, why, who plays into being a Nazi? And then fake also, Nazi? Why, would, why would you want to have like a t shirt with, with that guy on it? Like, what, what message are you conveying by putting yourself in that tea and taking a picture? Exactly. Like, what are you trying to. Put? Exactly, exactly. Because her thing is like, she comes from that meme era. Bitch, I'm a cow. Moo, moo, moo. She grew up in these chat rooms. She's an internet child, right? But I feel like she doesn't understand like who her audience is now. Like Doja Cat is mainstream pop, yes, but her and core audience, her, albums, like, her audience, to go to hell like, to a dis- to a point yeah. too, which was pissing people off. She's like, I yeah. don't care about like this. Like, what? Is- but with that, when I analyzed it, where it was like now looking back, I feel like what she was doing there was um, trying to say fuck all those like weird stand. Fans. Right, I will say that. Like, she's like, like, listen, I know you're a fan, but like, you know nothing about me, and I don't know anything about you. Like, yeah, so she was like, saying like, fuck weird. those weirdos, like that be going too hard, like damn near sending threats, yeah. to other people that are against Doja Cat. So she, that's where I think she was coming at that angle, but she was like so aggressive it with it. it. It wasn't like the, the best execution. Exactly, the message got lost a little bit. Exactly. So I think that's where she she fucks up with shit. Um, but when but when you're buried in other things like the white nationalist comedian thing, that's for white nationalist the. the yeah it's, it's it's wild it's wild but man her her name only keeps getting bigger so maybe it goes back back into that role where it's like maybe she knows like oh i'm gonna post this and probably delete this because this is controversial but it's gonna get some clicks it's gonna get some attention but it's like that's still How dangerous that? yeah it's still dangerous because like because like you have to keep up in the ante it's almost like um, she might lose a brand deal because of that like weren't you gonna lose any brand deals with that like what's going on well also like I've been using a lot of wrestling analogies today for some reason, and I'm not even the biggest fan of pro wrestling, but it was almost, um, somebody made a good point. It might have been Jim Cornette, because we were talking about the cast media controversy, and he was one of the guys to break it wide open as, like, this is a problem, where he was talking about how, like, he was watching one wrestling show, and he couldn't stand it because right out the gate, they're, like, stabbing, like, pretty much stabbing themselves, like, bleeding all over the place, and he's like, you have that on as the first match, now the championship match has to go on and they have to follow this crazy stuff. He's like, where do you go from that? Mm. Like, where do you go? So I think the same thing is like, okay, every time you're doing something controversial, you now have to up the ante. Yeah, that's why, that's why I think Kanye ante, Kanye took a st- step back because he he took it to the biggest extreme. I was saying I was saying on this podcast, I'm like, where is Kanye? After saying that he, you know, Hitler, uh, uh, he loves Hitler and that uh, the genocide didn't happen. When you go to that level, where else? Are you, what else well, what's re- next? Are you gonna a, kill someone? He released a song on um, on uh, what the hell was it? Um, the the uh, making the frogs gay. That guy, Infowars. He released a song on Infowars. Oh, he did. I didn't even know that. And people were like, "Yo, this beat's so dope." Blah 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 blah. I'm like, "Y'all, are y'all oh, I think he played one he had... at one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With no, Alex like, Jones. Are y'all the point? No, like, but they made a music video for it. It was really successful. Oh, really? Info, Infowars. Oh, I gotta check and that I'm out. And I'm like, does what anybody else think it's weird that he has to release a song on Infowars? Like. Where do you go from this? Yeah, yeah, he probably was convinced from like you know Alex probably was telling him like oh you know, my platforms you know you we're not gonna take you down you can do whatever you want to do on here and Kanye probably was like oh let's do a music video on here you know but he's someone that is interesting whereas like I think fundamentally he means well in his ideology of like let's accept everyone let's try to be friends with everyone like oh let's unify the world right but it's not reality. It's not a reality. He doesn't understand that. And the way he tries to do that is by pushing a needle to the point where it's like, let me tear my own house down. Let me destroy everything, right? Let me say, f- like, fuck me, right? And then look at him now. Like, he's still, you know, he has no brand deals. He's, everything's done. But at the same time, there's Didn't still... did he go to Skechers and Skechers turned him down? Yeah, people, like, people, okay. don't really, people don't really want to work with him. But now there's still, like, an anticipation for his next project. People online are, like, clamoring, like... What's he going to release? You know, because as long as his music is good, as long as the art's good, people can separate the art from the artist. But at the same time, he is someone that I think is a mental health, like he has a lot of mental health issues. It's not a regular man. Well, hold on. I will, um, I'll reveal a little something. There's, and the reason why I get the mental health part. Yeah. But the reason why I say F the mental health thing, and I think it's sometimes it's insulting to people with mental health issues. Like, yeah. I'll put it out there. I suffer from being bipolar i'm bipolar Mm. too so i don't have regular bipolar but at the same time as somebody who's been who's been diagnosed with it yeah 
being bipolar, from what I understand of it, and just even in my own experience, doesn't make you do things. What it does, it's almost like if you if you and I were in the recording studio, right, and I have a mixing board, and you're playing the drums, and by what bipolar by being bipolar does is it either turns the volume knob way down, mm. where you can almost can't hear it. Like, like normal listening levels is what most people's like brains are like. If you're bipolar, you're going either like, I'm cranking the volume up to 10, now it's distorted. Yeah. Or I'm bringing it all the way down, and now it's like, you can't even hear it. Yeah. But it's still you playing the drums. Yeah. So like, all being bipolar does is it ex- like super accentuates the highs and the lows of what you're already thinking. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make you magically think random stuff. Yeah, and say, say shit specifically. Or, like- or say things that you normally wouldn't know. Those yeah. things were in there. Maybe they're in the back recesses of your mind. Maybe they're intrusive thoughts that you don't want being out into mm-hmm. the world. Mm-hmm. But they're still yours. Yeah. So, like, and I'm not trying to go against you on this, but, like, I just don't like it when people are like, oh, it's the mental. I'm like, no. And, like, I get that he's, he's gone through stuff, and I'm yeah, yeah. empathetic to it. Sympathetic, even. But it, it's it's almost as, as a cop as like when Roseanne was like, oh, I'm not really racist. It was this Ambien. And Ambien was like, listen, we, we're a sleep drug. We don't make you... Think racist thoughts, you weirdo. Like, you know what I mean? It's like I, I look at it that like, I'm like, dude, that didn't make you think. Yeah, yeah, no, I see that. That didn't put the thought of like, oh, um, you know, slavery was a choice or anything. Like, no, that you were thinking that. Yeah, yeah. The bipolar stuff just amplifies or turns it way down. Yeah, I think I think I, no, I agree with that. I think is is for me, more I think about it is definitely a combination of everything because we talked about earlier, you know. And if you have the a lot island of people boys, in, in, yeah, in, in your circle that aren't telling you you're wrong, yeah, he has no in, real in, friends. Then, in, then, well, then it's almost like you're in a fantasy land where, like, this is not reality. Yeah, where you're always right, and everything you do is genius, and everything. No, that's not that's how not things reality. work. But when your reality. fans are telling you that, and you're in your circle who gets paid off of you, don't want to tell you. It's like the whole Stalin thing, where like nobody wanted to tell Stalin that he was going to lose the war. Yeah, yeah, because they thought he would get killed, and then they lost the war. Yeah, that's true. Because like with him, I feel like it could be a combination of everything. But specifically, the main thing that stands out more for me would be, like, the idea of, like, the attention grabbing, right? Pop star. What's a pop star? Popular, right? He's trying to be as popular as possible. He already is by default. But for some reason, I feel like he has this huge, like, egotistical mindset where it's, like, everything has to be about him when he wants it to be about him. Well, And what's going to do that, right? Island boys. They had no attention. They fell off. Let's kiss each other, right? He was like, let me just do the worst thing possible. What's the worst thing possible? You know, say things... At at first, it was say things against my own people, right? Slavery was a choice. Like, go against the whole black culture narrative, right? Then it was like, oh, what's going on? He saw what was happening. I feel like he saw what was happening with Kyrie. And he was like, hmm. I think the Kyrie situation was first. If I'm correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was first. Might have been. I think it was first. So I think I feel like he saw that and he and saw not to interrupt, it. but he con Ye has been on record whatever he calls himself now. Ye has been on record saying that oh, this is not a character thing. These are my own thoughts. Like he's gone on record saying I'm this is not a character, this is me. So it's just like, well, okay then, if you're telling us that. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I really got pissed off the most for uh because I'm a like a Kanye stan, but the most he's pissed me off was during the whole Nazi um situation but then even when the i did white watch lives matter tea yeah the white lives matter tea with candace on was like, wild i'm like this why? guy is really pressing down on this narrative and i'm like you know but when i watched the full interview like i watched the full alex jones uh interview with um with kanye it'll be it's so crazy where it's like he'll say the dumbest shit right like the whole nazi but then but then his fans and people around be like that was genius yeah but aside, so aside from marked. that but then there'll be like some other stuff sprinkled towards the end that'll make full logical sense and is like inspiring and I'm like why the fuck don't you just say that like why are you saying all this bullshit is it to get attention to then people hear the other message like it's like it's such a wild thought process if there is any if there is any like I'll never understand like you know, and people would always say like, "Oh, he's doing this just to sell, just to get blah blah." blah. And I'll be like, "Oh, because he's a creative genius. We just don't understand his yeah. process." So I'm like, "And does I'll be he like, understand his own process." I would disagree. Sure I would disagree doesn't. with both of those. And I'm like, now I'm veering towards more of the idea of like, it could be just for the attention to get sales or like generate some sort of attention to sell something. Because look at everything now; he's been quiet as a mouse, but he hasn't been putting out anything to sell. There's nothing that he can profit off of right now. Right. One can argue he doesn't need a profit. Right. 
but it seems like he has been. Every time he would talk some wild shit, the Candace Owen White Lives Matter shirt, you know, I think a day after, two days after, like a a, pro, a song came out, something came out like a like a shoe. It was like all like oh, it's all like a funnel machine. But when does it get old? Especially when people can pick up on the pattern. I think now, right now, for him specifically, it's gone old because even the Yeezys before he left, people think because he left Adidas that the Yeezys had tanked. I'm in the resale market. Before Kanye West left the the, or the, even better, the they're Adidas, like, they're like, they Adidas, went down. Adidas needs D, uh, Adidas needs yay, and I'm like, you still realize that they're the top, like they're the number five top five apparel brands in the world. Like Adidas is not gonna. Yeah, they'll scale they back. Took, they, they, took but a not, they took a hit. Yeah, they had a huge sales. I think they had like a huge sale last month. I, I bought like some stuff. They, they took a hit, but like that company's been around and they're going to be around. They're going to stay around. They're going to, they're, they're the people, if you go to Europe, they, all they wear is like Adidas track suits. Like certain parts of the, of the world, like they wear Adidas track suits. And like, certain sports are involved and it's like. Really? Yeah, like, yeah, like they're, they're sponsoring like soccer companies, billion dollar, you know, teams. Like Adidas are going to be set for life. But as far as like impacting culture and like are we wearing adidas anymore you know black culture hip-hop the sombers are doing good you know, like they, 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 they did the uh what was it the the, the shell toes are always gonna be a classic yeah. they're gonna have their moments but they had the uh what is it though the wall the walls bonner wales bonner or whatever that dude's name is yeah, yeah collaboration I know, I know that you're did talking really about. well they had the gucci collaboration that did well the, the kith bad collaboration the bad bunny did, shoe the bad bunny the kith collaboration like yeah, they're yeah. doing fine. They're gonna they're gonna always be successful. Obviously, there's a peak. Okay, and they might have just peaked. You know, they might go down, but it's not like they're gonna be completely vanished. But as far as when it comes to Kanye West, right now, it seems like his impact and culture and fashion, it might be non-existent right now because no one really is trying to dress like Kanye West. Look at how Kanye West is dressing. He has no shoes. He's walking around Italy, no shoes. Who's gonna start doing that? Like well, maybe the, the his diehard stands, bag thing, like, yeah. The gap and then gap like left him. Like everyone is like he has no company corporation tie right now. What is he gonna really rely on? I genuinely have no clue. And I'm also more worried about him as far as when it comes to like a father. He's been in Italy. It seems like for a few months right now. I'm pretty sure he has no connection with his children. It seems like he's not around his children. When you're like that, that and it, by choice, it's not a healthy thing because he's not in a corporate office. He doesn't have to report to a boss. He's his own man. Why also, are you not deciding to be with your family? And he also tried making his own infrastructure and it didn't go so well with like the school, like the, 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 whole, the school was a big controversial thing. They didn't have the infrastructure people thought they did and then wasn't like the person He wanted to build his, a whole town and shit. The, the person running his sports, the sports team for that school was like, we're not even getting any backing. We yeah. can't even go anywhere. And like, this is insane. And like, he wanted to scale back. up too fast. Like he, you know, he made a lot of money, so he wanted to scale up these ideas too fast. But he needed to do them one at a time. Amazing ideas, right? Start a school, build like you know this community. You know, pretty cool idea. Build all, buy all this land. But to execute is is another thing. You can't just think some shit, draw some shit out to actually do it. You need teams of hundreds, of thousands, maybe maybe thousands of people. You need a process. Yeah, you, and you need, need a process. To be able to, like execute on the process. Yeah. So he he, you know, I feel like he got rid- he got hit with a rude awakening. Right now, and it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen next. You know, he even looks unhealthy. Like, he looks like he's gained more weight than ever before. His hair, he's, like, shaved his hair. I don't know what's going on with his hair. You know, so he's a he's an interesting person to study because I do still think, like, he is the greatest musician of all time. When it comes to his music discography, like, there's, like, this hard to, like, you know, maybe see, I, I uh, Michael Prin- Jackson. I would, I would put Prince above if we're talking about musician, not star musician, mm. because Prince could play almost damn damn any instrument. instrument and hurt you. And when I say hurt you, like yeah, Prince is probably the most talented can, musician. He can grab a guitar and stand up with the legends, like legends in guitar, and yeah. make them look bad. Fuck them up, yeah. And then get on the piano and do the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And play every part in, in his own song and be his own band if he wanted to. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think Yeah can do that. No, he can't. And Michael Jackson couldn't either. They needed other people. So yeah. I think that I think that's. Not to interrupt, I think that's too. Michael Jackson got saved with the dancing. He could dance probably better than anyone, maybe ever. Like as as far as like and good in the studio and a good performer and yeah. a good songwriter, like yeah. all those things. But I think Prince, but Prince could also dance too and do all that stuff. So I I feel like Prince is like the dude. I feel like Prince didn't want to be bigger because he just didn't want to. Because Prince could have been where Michael's at, but Prince was more on like that. You I want to do whatever project I want to do at yeah. any time, and also 
he was um, him and Michael were smart about owning their own masters. And then Michael was buying other masters. He bought the Beatles masters because when Paul McCartney gave him the idea, that's what sullied the friendship between him and Paul McCartney. I feel like people don't, people don't talk about that shit. Uh, and he was warning enough. people years ago. And that's why he changed his name to the symbol because people thought like, he was crazy. People he, thought he was like, crazy. I wanted to get out of my contract because I didn't want to give him any more albums. People thought he was me. crazy, and in reality, now he's the fucking blueprint of everything right now. Because now we have these artists signing these three hundred and sixty deals, etc. They don't know what and the fuck is going on. Even those three hundred and sixty deals still screw him over. Like he was, he was even beyond that. He's like, no, I'm going to own everything because this is bs yeah um speaking of processes what is can you break down however simple or detailed you want to get into because mm-hmm. i've seen you get guests where literally like what was it the the lady who threw the bra at drake yeah, yeah. and you had her, girl and you had her on like Veronica. within within 48 hours or something yeah, crazy yeah. yeah you had her on the podcast <laughs> um so like even just how you get guests is probably a process but can you can you go through the process of like idea for podcast or reaction video and video gets published like what is everything in between that like how much planning if there's writing if there's like the editing can you just walk us yeah, like, yeah. walk everyone through use whatever examples you want just through the process because i feel like people don't know the process end of things and sometimes they don't know like oh like yeah this mo- this looked easy but we had to go through these like 50 friggin' steps just to get to this point no 100 and then you have to repeat it over and over over again. and over no 100 percent the process, the main process, step one by default is just me living my life, like organically living my life, meaning going through experiences in life, living my life, doing my thing, whatever that may be. And then that would be content I can maybe talk about, you know, aside from that, when I'm doing my day to day, I'm consuming content. Right. So I'm consuming content all the time, listening to stuff I find entertaining, funny, watching shows, movies, podcasts, interviews. So then that becomes, when it comes to the end of the week, always, okay, let me circle back at what I posted. Let me circle back at stuff I liked. Let me circle back at what I consumed this week. What's the most interesting thing out of all this to talk about it on the podcast? So then I'll literally like 48 hours or 24 hours before the podcast recording day, like on a Monday night. So the Sunday night before, or maybe the Monday morning, if I'm running last minute with it, I'll write down on my iPhone, Apple Notes, or maybe Google Doc, depending which one I want to use, the actual topics. I'll write down, starting with Rhode Island news, you know, I'll visit local news websites, or I'll just, you know, off the top of my head, stuff that people sent me, like I remember what happened, like during the weekend, you know, certain... It's like a lot of information gathering. Yeah, so it's like a lot of information gathering, you know, basically, you know, collecting all this data, um, writing it down, organizing it with actual proper references i'll have articles backing it you know images if i want to pull them up i'll have it all scheduled so i'll basically create a schedule and timeline of my podcast before i even record it that way when i record so it like a, a streamline like, like an outline you have like a like an outline, outline perfect word yeah outline um when it comes to interviewing people you know i've scaled back a bit on it whereas like i'll do it when it feels organically and natural because i personally i don't know i i rather you know, I don't want this podcast, I don't want this platform to just be living and dying off of just the interview. Because if it lives or and dies like off the of the interview... topic of the interview. Yeah, right? exactly. I don't want it to do that. I don't want it to be that. Um, You know, but when it's like an organic connection, you know, for example, I logged on Instagram like a couple of days, like last week, and I saw, you know, Ray Allen's son, and, I, and it reminded me, I'm like, oh shit, I got to message him. I want to interview him. Like, I... Let me do this right now. You know, I so emailed you just reach them. out directly, like even with directly. Like, I, saw, like, I saw like Danny Trejo, and I, and I think because you were, we were having Comic Con or some kind of yeah, I was at Comic Con, so I reached out to Comic Con to do media. Um, the uh, I I'm begging on it, but the girl, the lady from Fresh Prince, um, oh god, what was her name? Yeah, I forgot her name as well, but yeah, the, the, so, so you're just messaging people directly. It's not like yeah, I'll message oh. people directly. Um, I'll message like the or convention they center directly, I guess, or yeah, however, whatever channel they need. To. Usually, the first way I reach out is via email. Because I feel like people appreciate email. Like, it's more official, more business-like, you know? It's a little bit more... It's, it's yeah, it's a little bit more professional than, like, here's an Instagram DM. Exactly, right? But I've come to terms as well, where it's, like, this younger generation, like, for example, Ray Allen's son, I'll email him, but he's not going to respond. He didn't respond to the email. And also, how do you respond to the DM? email? You're usually probably getting it off social media. Or, yeah, exactly, through the Instagram account already. So I was, like, I already got the email through might, here. You, you may want to go, depending on the person, you may just want to go direct. Then. Exactly, exactly. But I do love the email, because the email, I can provide, like, my resume link and, like, 
analytics and like proper cool like links. It'll look cool. It'll look sexy. It'll look like dope. Like fuck, this guy sent me a dope ass email. Let me take him fucking serious. I can look at all this shit. This is pretty cool. You can put more thought and um and preparation behind an email than 100%. you can like a DM because you're because you're limited by the character count and the the um. Everything you can't even put like the really platform or or like you're 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 basically limited by that medium. Exactly, exactly. But with the email, it's like unlimited, so you can do whatever you want with it. And I already have like a preset email idea that I send to people, etc. And it's pretty dope. I really I love the way I structure my email. So, it, but the younger generation, like a Ray Allen son, college kids, like, I don't even check emails. They'll you know I'll DM them. You know they'll reach out to DM. But a lot of times also it might be people that just are already following me. And I'll try to keep it Rhode Island based. Veronica G. Uh, Veronica Correa. 36G, the bra girl, she was from Rhode Island. People were telling me she's from Rhode Island. I'm like, what? She's from Rhode Island? I, read, I looked her up. I'm like, oh, she actually is from Rhode Island. Let me interview her. One, I don't got to fly out to her. I don't got to fly yeah, that, her here. Easier. It's easier. Two, is the Rhode Island topic. So it'll tie into like, no matter what, I'm going to get regional attention. Aside from regional attention, she's yeah, attached to a attention. national attention because she's attached to Drake, right? So I'm like, oh, this would be awesome, right? Hit her up very professionally. She responded, let's do it, right? We made it happen. I get requests all the time. Local artists, rappers, up and coming. I just flat out say no. Like, I, I can't fake it. I'm not, you know, you can't pay me to be on here. Like, that's not what is going on here. You know, um, that's not, if I would do that, I feel like I'll saturate the platform. It goes, again, it goes against the branding and the thing that brought you to the dance in the first place. Yeah, 100%. You know, I, there's a podcast, um, Brandon, I forgot his last name, Brandon Boyd. He does podcasting. I had him on here. And he does like, you know, podcasting and like he'll connect people with other people in the business, like um, other entrepreneurs, rich millionaires, et cetera, that want to maybe be on podcasts, right? So he had the idea of like, you know, having these rich billion millionaires, successful people who want to just have on, come on a podcast in Rhode Island if they want to like pay a rate to me to come on my platform. So it's, it's so professional. You can give them like a package. They come on, you provide them clips, promo clips, et cetera, right? And I'm like, oh, that sounds pretty good, you know? But I've tried it and like people haven't gone, gotten back to him, et cetera. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I thank God that it hasn't happened yet because I'm like, I feel like that can maybe veer towards a fucked up path. Like it's going to get inauthentic, even though there might be some interesting people. If it's a fucking millionaire, I can ask them, hey, how the fuck did you become a millionaire? Yeah. Right? But then it detaches from the idea. Like, if they're not from Rhode Island, if they're from New York flying out to here, it detaches from the idea of, like, they're not from Rhode Island. So, it's like, why are they here? What's going on yeah. here? But maybe I can have them on a co-host angle where, like, they can talk about topics with me, et cetera. But what if they suck at co-hosting? It's a fucking awful or episode. Or you can ask them questions like, would you ever expand into the state of Rhode Island? Why or why not? Well, maybe that, yeah. yeah. I can maybe have their take on a Rhode Island. But then if it's an awful episode... What the fuck is happening here? I, maybe I got I got money for it for it, so it was dope. But so that's something that I haven't uh, I, I I've struggled with. I don't want. I know people do that though. That's like a big thing. More than people realize, there's podcasters that live off podcasting, and they get paid to have guests on, and they have no traction. They have no views like that. They have no engagement like that. But well, because that person, they 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 their business person, they just want to be on a podcast. They just want to be on a podcast. They want to be on a mic on a camera. It's crazy. That that shit. I didn't and realize like, that until a couple I, months can ago. Can I use your podcast content? You're like, here you go. All right, I'll pay for exactly. it. Exactly. Because they don't want to hire a team to do it. Bro, it's crazy. I didn't realize that that was. Like, but it makes sense when you think about it. Where it's like, these are rich people. They're not in it for the money. They're just trying to get the engagement and content. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it's, it's instead of like hiring a content team, let's let me use all these smaller people that are making the content for me. Exactly. And I'll pay their small fee because it's worth me doing that rather than getting a team and wasting my time. I can just show up, do a thing, and then leave and go on to my next thing. Exactly, exactly. But don't get me wrong. Like, if it does, cr if we cross those roles, like if there's like a fucking like a tech guy. I'll, but my thing is also, again, the cosign. I have to do my background. I have to make sure, like, I'm not having a con artist come in here on my platform. Like a Sam Bankman free. Yeah. Because <laughs> then we'll have, like, a situation like uh, DJ Envy. DJ Envy is, like, from the Breakfast Club. Oh, that big Coffeezilla did a whole thing on, on, like, the real estate guy and how, like, he's basically... Coffeezilla did one? Yeah, he, he did... Oh, he... That must have been new. I didn't see the Coffeezilla no, one. No, the Coffeezilla one. He's also the guy who... I seen the investigation on the podcast one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw. But, I seen um, Coffeezilla, but, but I didn't know he did this uh, Caesar Pena no, guy. No, he he did him and White Boy Spence both did it. Um, White Boy Spence is another one who I think I saw scammers. Spence. I saw that one. I but saw no, Spencer's. Coffeezilla even went deeper and was talking about how like he was bringing up clips from the show. <laughs> I gotta see that but one. But then he was also break. But then he broke down the money. Like he was, he actually connected 
all the people and how certain business people, like basically this guy like sold the same property four different times to four different people. And like, he, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. he went deep, like coffee zone went deep. I got to watch. So I yeah, watch I know that I'll, I'll send you some of the links to stuff we talked about. Cause I you think know, you'll find that'd it be interesting. Awesome. Yeah. So like, to like DJ envy. So that situation is like him co-signing that guy. I think I heart media yesterday, just deleted finally all the interviews that they had with that guy on Breakfast Club, which was five interviews. Because iHeartMedia doesn't, and neither does Breakfast Club or that radio station want to be anywhere near this. Bro, so they're, this is like a fucked up situation. And now trying to be like, I'm nowhere near. It's like, dude, you said you made money with the guy. You co-signed the guy. Because, but, well, what's worse is because this guy's being brought up on federal charges. Envy may have to go to court because the co the co-sign can get you in trouble, people. Yeah, people don't understand Depending that. on who, how... De- Depending on who you co-sign, yeah. what you co-sign, and how you co-sign it, and what you said. Yeah. If that person gets bought up on some charges, you may get bought in with it. Because he's like, I was never his business party yet. There's videos of him in the same business office. And he's like saying, well, we do business together. Now he's like, we don't do business together. I'm like, well, you did. Yeah. Listen, listen. I, I tell people all the time, man. I personally would rather struggle than to do some fishy shit to get money. I'd rather struggle because I, I'm still, I'm struggling right now. I come from the struggle. So for me, it's not like a... You know, like, I'll humble myself enough where it's like, I've been around people. I know, like, I could have easily, when I was younger, gotten into, like, selling drugs. I could have done so many things, right? Is it worth it, though? It never felt right to me. It's like, obviously, it's not right by definition. But it just, it never felt like, like, even when I, I'm telling you right now, even having people pay me for ads, I feel like, oh, I don't know. I feel, like, shy about it. Like, oh, why are you paying me? So it's like, why the fuck would I want to co-sign some sketchy shit? That's why I never got into, like, NFTs and stuff. Like, I, I've i got into crypto. Like, I'll buy Bitcoin. But, like, all, when it's, like, if it's too good to be true... It probably is. It probably is, man. So when you're doing... So you do your... You get your ID. You get your outline. You do your research. You vet the person out. Yeah. And then they agree. And so you do your scheduling. Yeah. All then myself. After, then, after, then after that, is it like get the studio set up and get them in or however you're going to record them? Yeah, I'll clean up the studio, make sure it's nice. I'll have like food, some sort of like, um, I'll make it presentable. Refreshments or Refreshments something. Refreshments of some nature because people don't understand like it's all about the presentation and it's also about the first impression. And not even just the first impression. If it was up to me, if I could afford it, I would have this fucking place like every time there's a guest like have a catering team like full on catering like Make, all- making the guests comfortable I think exactly is like, and making them like hey like this is a place where you can be yourself is is big crucial. bro is big especially because you know there's a perception where people see my me they see the engagement they see the millions of, of views viral clips so they might expect like you know they might expect that a bit like oh this guy like how did this happen right or maybe they might not I've had people in here that walk in and be like oh I didn't know that you even had your own studio. I thought you just had like a one wall or something. I'm like, yeah. And you're like, no, nope. like bro, how the hell? No, this is a full on production. Like this is a real deal equipment. Like this is not just like some bullshit, but you know, but it, it is what it is. Like, I don't mind, you know, revealing the curtain and, and then people being shocked. It's fine because you, you know, perception is everything. Perception is the number one drug in America right now. I think sometimes it, make, it makes you more relatable in certain instances when you yeah. reveal that it's a, lo- it's a little bit more lo-fi than people think. Yeah. No, 100%. I've had most of my viral, like, Twitter clips and stuff will be, like, low-quality shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? To the point that sometimes I'll make a clip lower quality on purpose to see if it works, and, and it does. There was a guy who did a study where he was, like, trying to sell a master class for this producer, and he was, like, the video guy. And, he, like, he, did, he, had a, he was a big-budget video guy. And then he's like, let me just take my phone out and record this guy off the cuff just to see which one does better because he already had the rights that he was able to do that and like they put him side by side and like the overproduced one only had so much reason engagement and like the off the cuff one that had like no special effects and it was just raw like did way better. People like that organic shit. That's like I feel like why my like big videos also viral clips of like me interviewing people on the street just saying whatever that come, the first thing that comes to their mind. People love that because like it's organic and also in Providence Rhode Island people weren't really doing that so when you got me doing it and then it's like a high level quality clip you post it online with captions. People are like, what the fuck? That crazy ass bitch. She's funny as hell. That's Providence. That's Rhode Island. We got that in our city. So they eat it up because it's like organic shit. So you get the recording done. Then how much goes into the editing? So editing a reaction is probably the most work I do throughout the entire week. So that uh, because the thing is, I've been able, thankfully, to now because... Another side of it we didn't even talk about today was like the copyright infringement issues because I do reactions, meaning I do 
Yeah, I was gonna record say, label they, music. There's, there's the legal aspect too. Yeah, so I'm covering the record labels music, so I have to play it when I'm reacting to it. You know, there's some big reaction channels, which are kind of known more as like a review channel, like the Needle Drop, Anthony Fantano. Yeah, where like they don't play the music. You know, so they have 100. percent They'll never run into any financial issues because they're just talking. It's all original content. But you're doing you're me. Doing off, I play the, the music, the, like feedback as it's happening. Exactly, I get feedback as but it's happening. Ways raw. You gotta, like do that that you don't get. Exactly. So throughout the years, we've had major issues where videos have been blocked, taken down, demonetized. I was but, gonna ask how you react to that stuff. I'm getting that now, so that's good. yeah. So it's like that shit is has been very frustrating. I've had very depressed days when like a big video might get taken down, like a Bad Bunny's album reaction. I'll hit 100,000 views in one day and the next day is blocked and I get hit with a copyright strike. I get depressed. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Because these record labels don't understand, like, why don't you have at minimum share the monetization with me and then you'll make money from me. But it's me. also the problem of having an algorithm do it and it's also the problem of the platforms don't want like the platforms want to encourage certain creators and discourage others because they don't want the legal trouble either. Mm -hmm. So for example, like I can't post my mixes on YouTube yeah, because I'll get a copyright hit. Yeah. I have to put it on Mixcloud. Yeah. And they may be wondering just a brief aside, why is Mixcloud allowed? Because Mixcloud does what bars and restaurants are supposed to do, pay the ASCAP and BMI fees. Mm. Amazon Prime doesn't want to do that. YouTube doesn't want to do that. Yeah. All these other platforms don't want to do it. Mixcloud was a platform made for DJs. They were smart enough to be like, well, we're a DJ-based platform. Yeah. We kind of have to allow people to play other music. Yeah. So what do they do? They pay ASCAP and BMI yeah. the publishing fees. Yeah. And they probably have like a certain like usage rate or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Which allows somebody like me to upload a DJ mix and not have it taken down. That makes sense. Yeah. So like that's... But YouTube doesn't want to do that. No. They, they probably have more money. They have more money than they can to do that, but they just don't want to. They don't want to. They don't want to. But there's always been rumors like behind the scenes, like oh, they're changing, they're changing. Um, they're they've heightened a bit more of the monetization for shorts and shit like that. Um, now they do like checks. So like you upload a video, they'll check it for you. Right. Before it goes public. Back then it wasn't like that. You, but then there's a whole. It was other, after. There's a whole other controversy now with um because I'm in music production. There's um producers who they'll grab, like, sounds or loops that are royalty-free from, like, wherever. And they're not really royalty-free. Well, or they are royalty-free, but they'll be the first to throw them up on YouTube. Like, as mm. soon as, like, a new pack comes out, they'll throw something together and put it on YouTube, and then they'll be like, this is mine. And because they're the first, it's almost like the first to trademark. So now anybody else uploads anything that has that sound, they get taken down. That's how YouTube works. A lot of people don't know. Like, if you upload something raw, like, there's a rumor that Adam Sandler records whenever he does stand-up. And he'll post it on YouTube just in case someone were to record um, his um, like actual set from the crowd. Right. And upload it like and, and like what is what's it called? Like spoil the joke. Right. Yeah. Because he wants the people to get the raw joke. Just like, you know, Kevin Hart, Dave Chappelle. They or have like the bag that you put your phone well, their in. Their entire YouTube channels where all they do is they take clips from other YouTube channels and monetize that like, it's not even their own content and i'm like i don't i don't how did that works i from a legal standpoint makes no sense to me but. yeah i've tried to dabble into that realm of like oh blah blah but you really can't do it the only way you can do it legally is like if you cover it like reacting to it and at the same time you have to distort it like whenever i play a clip of like brilliant idiots or any other podcast on my podcast i'll distort the clip or typically it'll probably be like a tweet that i already put out from that clip from that podcast and that clip on the twitter tweet or whatever the post is would already be distorted, watermarked, etc. But I'll still give credit to the original. You know, even when I post like local um, news coverage, etc., I always give credit to like the local news um, footage. Like if it's from WPRI, I'll be like, it's WPRI, it's NBC 10. Because a lot of times people don't do that. They steal footage and just don't give the credit to whoever it is. I've gotten my footage stolen a bunch of times. Like it happens to me all the time. But with YouTube, you're able to at least use the YouTube tool right adam sandler does that let's say but he never posts them no one looks he is i don't even know what channel this is it could be like an anonymous channel right but since he's the first to upload them unlisted it's not even public this is the this is the the secret behind the scenes like, it's not even public it's unlisted on youtube but since his jokes are already on there if someone were to upload them again in any other f fashion the same vocal arrangement the video etc he can take it like that's my ip like he can like take it down you know, and that's like a, a amazing tool, but it comes as a disadvantage if like you want to do some sort of coverage. Like, so for me, the editing process takes a while. Whereas like, if it's like an hour long album, let's say like the For All The Dogs, Drake, it was an hour long album. 
It was a two hour long video of reaction and talking. So for me to chop it up and edit it fully is going to take me probably about three to four hours because I have to ch sit down and skip every four seconds during the song. And I have to sometimes lower the volume on the song. Like if it's like a, for example, like let's say, like let's say the song is like, um, ha, ha, ba, 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 ba. I have to chop it right on four seconds. Sometimes I'll do like four and a half. And then where you make the clips like kind of stutter or stagger so that exactly way caught. And then, and then sometimes when you see like a new watcher of the channel, they'll be like, "Ah, uh, dope reaction!" But man, I hate it when you kept audio... skipping. The, you kept yeah. skipping the audio. Why is the audio going up and down? And I'll respond back with copyright infringement. Because if you see other big reaction channels, they either won't have the reaction out because it eventually probably got blocked and take it down. Or if you look at the description, it's demonetized. It has the the record labels licensing in the description. Cause they got demonetized, so they're not making one dollar from that video. Me, I'm making money from the videos because I'm able to chop it up and make it still entertaining. And if they want the raw version, go on the Patreon. Now, what goes into the publishing part? Because I think people like just like I upload, I put a title, and I put a thumbnail, I hit done, and I'm like, I think there's probably more to it than that. There's definitely like, more as far as like hashtags and analytics. And there's definitely that more. Nature. So so now YouTube, I feel like hashtags are not necessarily wor worth it. You don't really need them. Um. Even with Instagram, I notice more now, the way that they work is almost like a search engine. So now, even with Twitter, a hashtag has now lost its value, whereas like a word by itself is a hashtag, meaning you don't have to no longer put hashtag fragment to find fragment. You could just search fragment and it pops up as if it was a hashtag. So the benefit based of that- Based on the video description, I'm guessing? Yeah, based so on the video description. your descriptions nearly need to be detailed. Exactly, so my descriptions have to be very detailed put alternative titles in a description. Um, maybe say, you know, I have timestamps on all my videos, so the timestamps will have every single song track. Or so have if topics someone, in the timestamps, which makes exactly, it more searchable. Exactly. So if someone's looking up this week on YouTube, uh, Rhode Island, uh, Johnston, white nationalism, my podcast is going to pop up. But why? Not because it's in the title, because it's in the description. And that's not the way it works. Supporting white nationalists and Johnson, yeah, because not, it's, it's the topic of the video. Yeah, it's not because I'm supporting them either. Before, before anybody runs with that one, like. yeah, you know. So it's a it's a pretty interesting tool the way it's worked. Um, so it just has to be good. And the title typically for reactions, I like putting them all captions, all caps. That kind of works. Um, see, there, I knew there was a reason why the clip I put on my stories was "Mad Villain," <laughs> all caps. It works. You know, the man's name. All captions, all captions work. And um, thumbnails, I do it myself on Adobe Creative Cloud, an app on my phone, a free app. No, Adobe Express on my phone is a free app, and I do my all my thumbnails myself. I have a graphic designer that if I if I want to pay him, I'll pay him to like do whatever. He's one of my best friends, Edwin. He's like Eric's brother. He's Eric was the one main partner that now does acting. His brother, his older brother is Edwin. Edwin Robles. He's a great graphic designer. He does art. He's one of the guys that does the art here on, on the other side. He has oh, a, okay. He's the one that did like the murals, like the Jeremy Pena, Quidi Payne, David Duke, uh, Providence, like athlete mural I have that like, people love locally. So he does like a lot of graphic work. So he'll create like the logos, like for me to put like on the mic flags and stuff. Um, so he, you know, if I want him to do the, the thumbnail, I can have him do them. But the thing is, goes back to like the benefits of being the one that does everything. If I do everything, I'm able to like, okay, if I want to do a reaction today, I need a thumbnail today. I don't got to wait. I don't want to wait till tomorrow. You have, you have control over Yeah, it. if I have, to do it, I have to do it on Edwin's time, I'm going to upload a video without a thumbnail. So I've learned myself going from sucky, horrible thumbnails to now, in my opinion, the best thumbnails on YouTube. Like I'll be able to create the best fucking like high quality, like a Mr. Beast level thumbnail. And Mr. Beast, I think, says that he spends... I think he said a hundred thousand dollars per thumbnail, something of that nature, which made no sense to me. Where is that money going? Who the fuck are you paying a hundred thousand dollars to, or is it does he does he mean maybe like what he's putting in the image? Maybe he has to go retake an image. I don't know what the fuck he meant. I might have got that number wrong, but I swear he said ten thousand. It might have been ten. It might have been. I mean, I swear he said a hundred thousand, or it might have been ten thousand. Nonetheless, for me, it's zero dollars. I'm not spending. It's me on my phone doing it. Um, and it works, you know, it works like the way you got to do it. I've learned a way to get it working, popping you. It, it's all about just doing it properly, like actually scaling it back, putting sometimes what you're talking about in the video, maybe put it in words in the actual title of the thumbnail. But people don't realize that shit is important, you know, but then I can look like a hypocrite. My first videos, like I told you, that blew up, had no thumbnails and they were doing tremendously good. 
Why? I have no fucking clue. No fucking clue. So, you know, how much do once it's published, how much do analytics come into play? Like, what analytics do you pay attention to? Like, do you have any to do like, oh, this video did good, this video did bad? Like, what's the gauge? And do analytics factor into your creative process? Like, oh, I got to switch it up because my videos are trending now, so I got to I gotta pivot. I got to do something different. Yeah, I I would want to say no. Like, oh, because, like, you got to ignore all that shit. But I'm the one that does everything, so I have to pay attention to my analytics. So I'm constantly looking at all my comments. I'm constantly looking at the viewing engagement between 24 hours to like a week later what the video's doing. I have like an app called YouTube Analytics. Any YouTuber can have the app. It's like a free app. And you check the analytics. You check the money that's coming. You check everything on that app. So I'm able to check it. And it's very um, it's very significant. Um, It really matters. You know, it really matters. I would be dumb to say that it doesn't um, because sometimes if I upload a video and it gets like no traction within the 24 hours, I'm like, what the fuck happened? Was it because I uploaded too many videos today? Was it because people didn't get notified right? Is it YouTube's fault? Is it my fault? What the fuck is going on? Um, so I'm constantly looking at that shit all of the time. Um, it really matters, you know. And feedback in general, I like people commenting because I respond back. I like talking to my fans. Like, if they, they're supporting me, I want to make sure that they know that I fucking care. So I'm responding to them all the time. Maybe not all of them, but majority of them, they'll get a response from me all the time. When should somebody should somebody switch it up? Because like there's this, you know, some people go viral overnight. Some people it takes them a while. Yeah. And you hear like, don't give up. Just keep doing your thing. But like at what point do you have to look at the data and go, I need to switch up my presentation. Or I need to switch this up. Like, is there a set point? Like I, I know for you might be different because you went popped off early. Yeah. But even you had to admit that that's not the norm. Definitely. It's definitely not the norm. Um. Like I would if, say, if you're doing it, your videos for a year and nothing's happening. It's it's like like when do you have to kind of look at like does my content suck? But also like if you're not following something trendy because people want to niche down. Like, well, not all niches are going to have certain audiences. Yeah. Or is it better to be an inch deep and a mile wide and try to appeal to everybody? But that's not in everybody's DNA. So it's like, what do you yeah. like? How do you gauge that? I feel like a year could be a proper sample timestamp for like, if you're trying to do something consistently and try it out, do it for a year, but not fake year. Don't like skip a month. Do that shit for a year, either every day, every month consistently. And then if it doesn't work out, potentially consider giving up. But me personally, that could happen. And I still wouldn't give up because I feel like as long as I'm happy, then fuck the analytics, right? Now, fortunately and unfortunately at the same time, you know, I have a family. There's more things I have to take into account. I run the whole company myself. So I can't be purely fuck the views. Views is what pays the bills. Views right. is what keeps the lights on right here and this microphone on is the views. So it's like, I can't be fuck the views. You know, even though I inside, I could feel like, oh, fuck this shit. Like, I just want to do it because I'm happy. I don't care about the views. But it's not reality. Reality is like, if my views are going down, you know, after three months of them keep going, go, keep going down, I got to switch something up. Like, you know, but if someone's starting brand new, I would say a sample set would be a year because I feel like in a year, anyone working hard consistently at something in a year, I feel like their life can change, whether it's financially, whether it's spiritually. Well, they just know the process behind it. Exactly. Or because, they answered the question of what if at least. Exactly. They're, at least they're trying. And also it becomes like a practice where it's like, hey, hmm, I did this shit for a year. Hmm, didn't get much views or engagement, but I'm actually pretty good at this shit. Hmm. I can maybe leverage my talent. Like I, I can edit. I Maybe I'm not the greatest host, but I can edit like a motherfucker. Exactly. And I can be somebody else and be their editing person and make money that way or be an editing person for multiple people. Exactly. Be like, yo, bro, yo, uh, I want to hit you up. I see you have a podcast. You know, I had a podcast for a couple years. I didn't. No one really watched it. It wasn't successful, bro. I'm a fucking wizard at editing. Like, can I like can I show you what I got? Maybe we could work together. Or my audio quality is better than anybody else. Exactly. Like you're not gonna find better audio quality than me, and I'm doing it consistently. Exactly. You know, you can you can you can leverage it a lot. So it, it depends the angle you want to take it. You know, overall, people just think you know money, 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 money. Speaking but of that's money, that's not the way. You know, there's, like, this analytic that I think, like, only 1% of, like, the YouTube creators get most of the views and the money, and then, like, everything else is falling. But it almost sounds like the American economy. Anyway, <laughs> um, <coughs> going with that, can a, a mid-sized YouTube creator actually make a living, like, n you know, not being the top, top end? Is that possible? And the reason why I ask that is because 
I remember you saying for the Hot 106 interview that you would rather be the big fish in the small pond. Yeah. But how sustainable can that be? Like, you know, especially we're in it, we're in a society and a culture, especially in the in the states, where it's like you got to be the best. Yeah. Right. It's like yeah. anything else is shit. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, so, I, I get that. Is that sustainable? How long can that sustainably be? Especially when if you're tied to a certain platform, you don't know what that platform is going to do tomorrow. Yeah, I think it, I think it can be sustainable. It just depends on where you go about it, right? Like for example. Me personally, I haven't really reached out to a level I can, even locally, to get sponsors on the podcast. If you want to do that regionally, you know, people, I know people in Dominican Republic right now that get maybe 400 views per, like, podcast or just show on YouTube, right? But they make a living off of it because they have a bunch of local sponsors, you know? They might have good quality or at least they have good, like, content. They have an actual content and people want to sponsor this content, you know, because at least if you it's not much views, but at least people are talking about it within your neighborhood or whatever. People know that you got something going on. So then you can leverage it that way. People don't got to always aim for like the high level fucking manscape ads. And I've worked with them all manscape fucking, you know, all these big like stereotypical um, podcasts. You like sleep. Yeah. Yeah. All these, you know, they have the money, but they want proof of concept consistently manscape like they'll pay me you know a certain set price at first but it's like hey after this we got we want to see you do a certain number amount of numbers and then we can see if we have a long-term relationship if you don't hit those numbers they don't want to work with you no more yeah. so that sucks because like fuck you guys don't really believe in me then you guys believe in the idea of me and what could come from me but you don't believe in me right whereas as if you connect with a local person just looking for some promotion you know, you're starting up your show. You might get a couple hundred views. You can charge them $10, you know, anything. They'll start believing in you, you know. Oh, and then in the future, in the long run, they c- could be a part of that long journey. You could be like, fuck, you believed in me in the beginning. Like, I appreciate those $10 you gave to me when I was getting no views. You know, Kai Sinet said that. Kai Sinet would get $10 to post on Instagram stories, you know. Now this guy's a millionaire. This is the biggest streamer in the history of streamers. Like, there's no one bigger than Kai Sinet. His name is rings numbers. It's insane, right? Millionaire. Younger than me. In his 20s. A kid. You know? From some of the roughest neighborhoods in New York. It's possible. You know, it's possible. So you gotta just start somewhere. And he's doing what he just did back then. Same shit. Just, is just him being himself. He's happy. So just ask yourself if you're happy first before you try to like, oh... Can I live off this? You Maybe you can, but first ask yourself if you're happy. We're getting towards the end, so some final wrap-up questions. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this leads perfectly into this uh, this question. What advice would you give your younger self or somebody who wants to do your same line of work? I know you've like taught podcast classes and things like that, but like, what advice would you give? I would give myself... Um, I would tell myself, my young self, to study the business side of things earlier on. Hence why I made this podcast. Yeah. I would say study the business side of things earlier on. Um, Yes, make sure you're happy. Enjoy yourself. But just study the business side of things. You don't have to do them. You don't have to like, oh, you don't don't have to generate no money, but but at least... vocabulary and speak the language. Yeah, learn about it. Learn about it. Get in these uncomfortable rooms or at least least watch these uncomfortable videos. Like literally go on YouTube and look up what is a LOC. Look up and how why would you can do an I LLC yeah. versus a sole proprietorship? Yeah, and look like, up what are taxes. How can I pay yeah. my taxes? Look all this shit up because if you do it at an earlier age, then it becomes a more of like, oh, you already know what the fuck to do. But when you get hit with it years from years later, where you're it's like, a lot you're of 25, and things you got to change, you got to yeah. change your, your logo or your trademark name. You or get your, hit with or fucking legal name. problems. You know, having to get a lawyer, all this shit that I had to deal with. So it's like, I regret all that. You know, but. It also made me who I am today. I can't be mad at that either. But I would tell my younger self that for sure. Um, because I could be richer right now than I am right now. Not richer. I'm not rich at all. But, <laughs> but what would be the term? I would be way more financially well maybe, off. Maybe have higher revenue. Hi, well, yeah, higher so revenue. Like complete higher revenue. Like I would be at least, you know, not stressed out about my fucking car. Like certain things that I would be able to now add more of a you know leverage for me creatively 
You know, I'll right. be able to like fucking not worry about where if I got to drive over here, I could drive anywhere I want, you know, but certain things like that a fucking car issue messes me up. It messes my day up a lot of times. You know, if I got to be at the mechanic every fucking month, it's a problem, you know, um, you know, so certain things like that I would tell myself that because who, who knows where I would be. Maybe I would be able to like, you know, fucking move in my parents out of wherever they live in, you know, getting my sister or her business started certain things. I'd be, I feel like I gotta be able to do, um, that I just I'm not able to do right now. What is there like a single or maybe a couple of things of what you do that you wish the general public, not even just the YouTube audience, but the general public knew about? Is there like a misconception or of like or something that you wish more people knew about when it comes to like your work and like maybe the behind the scenes stuff? I do wish sometimes, even though I don't mind the perception. Like, people are going to think what they're going to think, right? Like, and then there is an advantage of people thinking, like, oh, this guy has this many views, this many followers. He has to be rich. He has that YouTube money. Oh, my God, he's kicking it up. You know, there's a protection. There's, like, a protective narrative with that where it's, like, people feel like, oh, he's successful, right? But for me, it's, like, I am still am successful, but not as financially as people think, like, at all. Like, at all. And maybe it's because, like, oh... I have the studio, I got to pay the rent here, I got to pay rent at the apartment. But even without that, like, especially the price rent is at now in this city, like, if I were to move again, like, at a new rate, like, paying $2,000 for, like, a two-bedroom, I would be out here, like, probably working part-time somewhere else. And I wouldn't mind that either. Like, you know, I feel like people don't understand that. Like, they think, like, oh, maybe because he doesn't work anywhere else, this is his main job, his only job, he is rich, you know, but it's not, it's just, I'm comfortable with, with breaking even, being well off, paying rent here, you know, and still being able to afford to buy food for my son, keep a head on, a oh, uh, 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 roof on his head, but I'm still trying to scale up higher. Right now, it's just apartment, mountain, rats everywhere, not in the house, but outside, the mat and rats, and it's like a it's like a real deal I've infestation. Like in mat and rats, like everywhere. Every time I step outside, it's insane. Also, weirdly enough, I lived on Thayer Street for years, and like there's rats out there too. And they're having a when I say infestation, like these super even the super nice brown buildings, like the new ones that are built. Oh, I'm seeing rats man. like literally walk across like the green into these brand new brown buildings and like walk in the doors and shit. That's why all those restaurants, like, all those restaurants, they're dumpsters in the restaurants that, they don't maintain there them. for years and it's only recently, like yeah. I recently moved out of there, but like it was only in the last couple of years I saw that. I never saw that earlier. Even in those restaurants have been there. There's always been that's drunk crazy. college kids eating at these restaurants. It's not like that's, the yeah, restaurant yeah. part ain't new. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that would have been a thing always. And if then. anything, there's less restaurants right there right now than there is there's no, yeah. the year before. So like, that still doesn't add up. It's probably just a heightened rat, rat infestation in the cities. Well, that's, what, that's what it seems like is going on because the dumpsters, you know, around the man neighborhoods are always like packed with rats. It's insane. Um, you know, but I, I think that's the thing I would want people to know more about me. Like, yo, like this man, like more than likely I'm poorer than my supporter that's watching me, especially locally. More than likely. 100% more than likely. And... Because I feel like people, I don't know why they care so much. Like, I get why they care. Because don't get me wrong. If I were to interview, like, you know, a Drake or these big people, successful people, I would love to, like, break down their business and, like, yo, how the fuck did you make so much money? So I know that money's fascinating. Numbers. I love numbers. But, you know, with me, I feel like people just think and assume. Like, I've I've met random people, fans or just strangers, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, it's like YouTube money. I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? Like... Do just you because someone's like that on big YouTube money only goes to like the top 1%. Yeah, you know and just because I mean? someone's on YouTube doesn't mean like they're making money like so like the the fucking CEO of Burger King you're telling him YouTube money but you're not telling the new employee that just got in learning the ropes you know as a clerk you're not telling them hey you're making that that Burger King money right? You're not. So it's like there's like just YouTube is just a a place to make money. Not everyone on YouTube is making a bunch of money. If that was the case then everyone would be on YouTube. Like, that's not the point. That's not the, you know what I'm saying? I've just been able to tolerate enough where it's like, I know how to make money off of YouTube. Advertisements, sponsorships, reselling. I still do it, not that much, but I still be able to get money from that as well. You know, and I'm also, like I said, I'm not flashy. I'm not boast, boasting my money. I don't know when was the last time I bought myself a pair of like brand new shoes or anything like for myself at all. Like, that's not what I am. That's not what I'm doing with my money. You know, I'm reinvesting it into this. 
making sure my my supporters get quality content and also making sure my son gets some newer clothes. He's growing fucking so crazy is insane lately. What's the future ambition for a club ambition? Ah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. The future training right there. Future ambition is probably just doing what everything I'm doing now but at a larger scale. I would love to have staff, employee, you know, and I would love to have other people, you know, that maybe want to do what I'm doing, help them do it too. Like help them create a high level podcast in Rhode Island, but maybe it's different. Maybe it's a a girl podcast talking about relationships and they blow up. Uh, maybe it's a sports podcast talking about sports and they blow up. I would love to produce that and help that. But at the same time, I don't want to take advantage of them. I don't want to take advantage of them because I hate when people take advantage of people. So I want to make it where it's like a natural partnership where they're comfortable enough where it's like, hey, they're growing. And at the same time, I'm able to get something from it to the point that it's keeping them happy but not leeching off of them because I don't, I wouldn't want someone to leech, you know, leech off me. So it's like, I, that's, that's what I would want to do. That's like a future thing. I want to build like a podcast network based out of Rhode Island with a bunch of maybe podcasters. And also on top of that, I want to build like a larger scale, just YouTube platform, doing more Rhode Island content, Rhode Island dating shows, Rhode Island, you know, vlogs, Rhode Island food tours, more Rhode Island encompassing content because I I don't see myself really leaving this state probably ever. Um, Especially the way rent's going everywhere. Like you try to leave the state you think rents right, high here? People from bigger cities are coming here. Yeah, they're coming here. Exactly. So we're actually the lucky ones here. People don't realize that when you look at it from the outside in, it's like, oh shit, this is like everyone wants to come also, here. Also, I feel like when global warming really reaches its tipping point, we're gonna have like the best weather ever. Oh, 100 percent. We're gonna be like the new Florida. Yeah, we're near in terms the water. Of weather, not in terms of other things. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're near, we're near the water. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's we're, we're literally the ocean state. We're in between Rhode, um, New York and you know Boston. I think we got the sweet spot here. So. Yeah, I don't see myself living here, you know, and there's a lot of creative, dope people growing out, growing out of here, blown up from here that, you know, I could just give a platform to like Ray Allen's son. Like there's going to be more athletes, more actual stars coming out of here. People that I still haven't interviewed. I want to interview that judge, the famous judge that had them caught in Providence. Oh, yeah. I want to interview him. I want to interview anyone that has like a very heavy resemblance that's come from Providence and Rhode Island that. I just love and find fascinating, but then they also have a big following, you know, because it can help each other grow and it can help everything grow. Um, Because even, for example, the Cotton Providence thing, I knew about him without knowing that it was in Providence. You know, I watch his clips. I remember watching it like on public access late at night. Bro, people would tell me like, that. Like pre YouTube, like like the the viral video before it was viral video. I didn't even know that. People would tell me that, like more now. Like, I remember like late at night just watching it on public access going, like, what is this? Bro, I would see viral clips and I'm like, what this guy's like, what is this going on? Then eventually I found the YouTube channel. I'm like, caught in Providence? Has how many subscribers? Providence, Rhode Island? And considering it was a thing before the internet was even, like, before, this is like, insane. before, like, social media style of internet. Like, the internet was around, but this was, like, before you could even upload a video onto a site and, and play it back and stream it. Like, his videos existed pre-streaming. He was public access this first is insane. and just carried it over. And it was also, like, heartwarming shit where it's, like, this guy's just being a nice guy, like, what? And they this is dope. Paul Abdul on what? The, yeah, what the, yeah. Like insane. I was like, what is happening? Yeah, so, 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 so things like that. Like you know, I would love to like you know interview him and just certain people of that caliber, and just open it up more. Um, I see it being possible, but I also gotta you know scale up financially more monetization, and also be less stubborn and try to get people on the team. You know, get staff, interns, something more help to make all this possible because I can't do it alone. I can't. With that, we're at the end, and I, I, I proudly stole this tradition from Hot Ones, where you don't have to eat any wings to do this. It I'm about the, to say, what the fuck, you got some the, wings? It is the at. I wish that that'd be hilarious, but um, <laughs> is the final part of the show. Yeah, you have the open mic. No more questions. You can say or address or do whatever you want, or you can just say it. it's up to you. So whatever you want to say, whatever you want to leave out on, you got the final word. Go for it, man. I would just say. Anyone out there, you know, watching or listening, especially if you're in Providence, Rhode Island, or just Rhode Island in general, the state, remember the idea. I love emphasizing a lot. A lot of people, you know, it might be become like my slogan. You know, a lot of the biggest and best, like, I feel like, you know, legendary people throughout life just have had like slogans and terms and, and shit of that nature. And this one might just become mine without me even trying, but just because it always replays on my mind. But the idea of like, you know, if you want to, Go to New York and LA, 
you're going to be chasing something that a lot of other people are chasing. So it's going to, it's going to create a situation where you are a small fish going to a big pond. But luckily in Rhode Island, we have literally the smallest state in the country. You know, and I say luckily, ironically, because a lot of people think it's a disadvantage, but it's actually an advantage in my eyes where if you do something out here, you're going to stand out. People are going to like, oh shit, you know, if not a lot of people, at least in my opinion, people that matter, right? For example, you've been doing your show. Awesome. High quality stuff. I paid attention. Appreciate that. Thank you. I loved it. I'm like, this is amazing. This is regional focused. This has a niche. The name is fire. The The logo's dope, straight to the point. The aesthetics is awesome. I, I want to support this guy. Like, this is awesome. Like, this is amazing. Why why haven't I known, known about this since episode one, right? I would love to do it one day. Hopefully, he reaches out. You know, I ran into you. And we made it happen, thankfully. But I, I, I was hoping. I'm like, hopefully, you know, hopefully I'm cool enough to, to be I all- didn't even know you knew about my thing. I, it was the other way around. I'm like, I hope, hopefully it's not too big for me to- No, no, I knew about it. Show. 100%. 100%. I just didn't know the face behind it because, like, you never show your face. You know, you're yeah, like Vlad, is, you're like Vlad true. TV. You know what I'm saying? But Vlad- wait, 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 Hold on. Don't compare me to that guy. <laughs> yeah, guys. Go, oh, no, 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 no. No. You're dude, the Vlad uh, TV uh, of Providence. Uh, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not causing problems Whoa. like that guy. You're not being you're not being called into a trial with the KVD and I'm Tupac. Not, I'm, I'm not I'm not a cultural cult, culture vulture. Okay? Yeah, yeah, like that guy. You're not being accused of that yet. Yeah, no, hopefully I'm never accused yeah. of it. Jesus. <laughs> do, do, do. Listen, <laughs> but man, I think I think what you're doing is awesome. So it's like people like me, whereas like I have like you know the numbers, etc. I'm important in a lot of people's eyes. I notice what you're doing, and I think that is is really important. And it should be done. And more people like you need to just keep it up and keep it going because there's a lane for everyone for it to be filled. People think like, oh, no one gives a fuck about me. It's the smallest state. Fuck Rhode Island. I got to move out of here. No. Try to become a big fish in a small pond. You know, it's possible in any realm, any nature of anything that you're doing in life, whether it's fucking a lash tech, whether it's a carpenter, car washer, anything. If you brand yourself right, you keep it consistent, you are able to make a significant impact here in this small state of the country, Rhode Island. But at the same time, realize that not there's room for everyone, but not everyone can make it. Because if everyone made it, then what the what what are we doing? Like everyone's at the top or everyone's making, you know, you might have to just not sometimes be a part of that necessarily main conversation. But as long as you're happy in what you're doing, wh- what is your level of success there then? You know what I'm saying? Like, are you trying to gather, like, are you trying to be the best of what you're doing? Or are you trying to gather, like, financial? It all, it, it always, like, because people always ask me, like, for advice, like, what, what, you, what should you do? What should you do? But I feel like, uh, like, I can say what I just said, right? With the, oh, you know, especially in Rhode Island. Keep it up, no matter what. There's lanes for you, but it also pertains specifically to a person's situation, because some people just want to do it for the money. That's like it. that's all. There's a lot of people I've met. They're just, just like I'm, I'm just gonna get. I'm just gonna do it for the bag, and that's exactly. it. Exactly. There's a lot of people I meet with certain things. They just want to do it for the money. And I look at them sideways. Where it's like, I get it, but it's like, do you really think that's you're not gonna, gonna have last? The longevity to last that? Yeah, long? it's not gonna like, last when you're going for the quick buck. Yeah, that's not gonna last. You could think that it's not gonna last. It's not gonna last. You know, so. But if you are trying to do it for the money, hey, there's ways to get money and, you know, be out of here fast and as you, well. And you got to be the controversial person maybe because that makes you quick cash. So are you willing to do that? It's like, are you willing to take that heat? Exactly. You know, but, you know, as long as you as you able to stand out in some way, you know, it could be random. You could be a fucking, a brand new podcast that I just started in Cranston, but you wear a green tie. Every single video, you're wearing a green tie. Now you become known as the green tie guy. That could be his own thing. You know, you can build a branding without people realizing, you know, so certain things could stand out. You know, right now there's like a big thing where like a lot of TikTokers and like podcasters post videos from their podcast on TikTok and like they wear masks the whole time. There's like anonymous podcasters and like they talk about conspiracies and stuff with like a mask, like a full blown body mask on their face. It works for them because it's like, what the fuck is this? This isn't interesting. What I is mean, this guy talking Daft about? Daft Punk made a DJ career. Yeah, Daft Punk so, vibes. You know like, what I'm saying? So there's ways to grab people's attention without selling your soul necessarily. Like it's just in your branding, you know? So the green tie is a great example. You know, for me, I feel like 
what's helped me without trying has been like the checkered background in my podcast set because people kind of see it stand out like oh the checker background guy like the checker of the black and white and i've had people into into design and fashion they'll come in here and be like aesthetically i love this and i'm like oh thank you like i didn't think about it aesthetically i just thought about it for soundproofing because i moved in here i never didn't know who the neighbors were i didn't want to get the landlords mad right, right. we got to soundproof this room right and i'm like i don't want to soundproof it fully let me just do checker to soundproof some spots you know half the room soundproofed and it'll be in the aesthetic now of the podcast, the checkered background, you know. So it works because if people don't know what the fuck, you know, it's part I of your do, branding. It's a part of the branding. They at least know like, oh, the checkered background. I've seen that before. I know what that is. Oh, okay. You know, so I would tell people that as well. That's a good tip to like focus on your branding. Like don't just do something to do it. Also, maybe if you want to add to it, what's the thing that you're going to do with it? Are you going to always, you know, talk with an accent are you gonna always have a green microphone wear black pants like there could be something that you could do consistently that could add to your branding as well well with that we're at the end of the show and um victor bias thank you no oh, thank you thank you so much for coming on aka the voice of providence aka oh god the, the people's mayor of providence aka <laughs> The Rhode Island content king, <laughs> a.k.a. the head of the future club ambition podcast media empire. I mean, it's already a thing, but like yeah. when it gets even a bigger empire, Hopefully. you will be that you will be the head of it. Yeah. Uh, with that, thank you for coming on. Thank you for spending this time with me answering these questions. No problem and at all. Um, you know what? Speaking of taglines, I'm going to leave on this tagline. As I, as always, you know, uh, for anybody listening out there, thank you and do me a favor. Keep on creating. Love it. <laughs>